<laughs> Have you got any more questions for, for Basil? No, he's been fantastic. Absolutely oh. outstanding. Oh, it's been great to be out. But, but do you like my outfit? I've come dressed yeah. in this Scottish outfit. I'm going to be supporting Scotland, you know, this weekend. And I've gone full commando because as I was oh. coming here oh, from okay. Waterloo Station, yeah. uh, uh, believe me, I'll be having cashew nuts for me tea now because it's, the wind went right up the gorge. <laughs> but I'm rather pleased.
expense worth of healthy food and activities to 5,000 children's groups by July 2024. Drive on TalkSport with Motorpoint. Discover 23 plate Kia Seeds from just 16799. There will be 14 minutes of extra time. With Betfair's 90-minute payout, you don't have to wait for the final whistle to celebrate. Because your winning bet will be paid out in full at 90 minutes. Betfair. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Six nations and six amazing chances to win an unforgettable adventure for you and five mates in a Six Nations European host city of your choice. To take part, enter online now at greenking.co.uk slash rugby. Six nations, six mates and six international rugby getaways worth £3,000. Scrum down and sign up to win at greenking.co.uk slash rugby and watch all the Six Nations action live at your local Green King pub. Terms and conditions apply 18 plus drinkaware.co.uk. On average, Rift get their customers three grand back. I'm like a rubber ball, I come down. Let's get the ball rolling. Search Rift Tax Refunds. With now, you can stream all the drama from the Premier League instantly and without a contract. The stuff the dreams are made of. This Sunday, title rivals collide as Liverpool take on Manchester City at Anfield. Can you- Get all Sky Sports channels for a day or a whole month with a Now Sports membership. Stream Liverpool versus Manchester City live this Sunday from 3.45 with Now. 18 plus Sky Sports content streamed via internet. Full terms apply. You know how the best ideas come in the shower? Well, here's one for you. Switching to an energy efficient shower head is more efficient because it saves water and could save you up to £40 a year on energy bills. And that's worth singing about. Shower, save, repeat. It all adds up. Find more energy saving tips at gov.uk forward slash save energy. Here they are, the racing lovers of the UK, phone in hand, ready to play the Coral Reward Shaker. Look at them shake. We've got the regulars at the race course shaking their phone with confidence. And look, they've won a free bet. Parents on a day out just happy to be here. They've got it too. An odds booster for them. Lovely stuff. Everyone's a winner. Play Coral's free reward shaker this Cheltenham to win guaranteed daily rewards and offers. Coral, we're here for it. 18 plus UK. Max one reward or offer per player per day. Reward restrictions, requirements and T's and C's apply. Take time to think. On 1089 and 1053 medium wave, online, on your mobile, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport. Talk Sport. I'm Ben Fletcher. Good evening. Liverpool leads Sparta Prague by four goals to one in TalkSport 2's live Europa League commentary. Brighton are in a spot of bother. They trail Roma 2-0 in the Italian capital. Later, West Ham go to Freiburg here on TalkSport. Fabianski comes in for Ariola, the only change from the side that beat Everton. Rangers are away to Benfica. And right now, Villa and Ajax are goalless in the Europa Conference League. Christian Horner says the intrusion on his family is now enough and he wants to move forward. The Red Bull principal couldn't comment on news that his complainant has been suspended by her employers owing to confidentiality rules. He told a press conference ahead of the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix, it's now t- it's time now to focus on why we're here, which is to go Formula One racing. Speaking of which, Max Verstappen finished quickest in first practice in Saudi Arabia, while Fernando Alonso was quickest second time around. Jake Paul has announced his next bout against Mike Tyson. The YouTuber-turned-fighter will face the 57-year-old former heavyweight champion in July. Paul says... It will be the biggest fight in history. It's set to go ahead at the Dallas Cowboy Stadium on Netflix. Talk Sport News. The US is planning to build a port on Gaza's coast to deliver aid, and NATO has officially gained Sweden as a member. For more, head to Talk TV and Times Radio. Talk Sport Weather with Quick Fit. Keep your car safe this winter. Visit your local centre or quickfit.com for tyres, MOTs and batteries so you can drive away happy every time. Clear skies in the south and northwest tonight, otherwise mostly cloudy with showers in the north. On 1089 and 1053 medium wave, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker. Oh, what a finish! The Europa League, live on Talk Sport. 
in May last year, West Ham were in dreamland. Europa Conference League champions and on top of the world in a magical night in Prague. Well, this season it's the Europa League where the Hammers were blighted in the semi-finals two years ago. So they've got unfinished business and they're hoping for another incredible adventure. New memories in a new stadium with a new team in a new competition. We probably lost the game in the first minute at the London Stadium. It's the worst possible start for West Ham United. Uh, the trip to Frankfurt next week is going to have to be an historic one. We hope that our experiences over the last two seasons in Europe will, uh, will help us. Eintracht Frankfurt are through to the final. And there's a whole generation of West Ham fans that would have thought that nights like these would never come again. Yet here they are. European semi-finals for the second successive season. It's all a learning curve that you take part in this in this journey. And like I said, it will stand you in good stead for you know different European games that you have as well. Those dreams will not fail and die. They come from behind. Character and desire. And the two mixed together is a powerful mixture in football. We hope that uh, we can continue to get into the latter stages of, of European competitions. Pablo Fernandes into the area. He's won it. West Ham United are in the final. Do you know how many other teams would love to, to do what we're doing and feel like what we how we felt last night? Bowen, who's running through on goal. He shoots and scores and wins the Europa Conference League final for West Ham United. And those West Ham dreams for once didn't fade and die. West Ham had never felt so massive after winning a first major trophy for 43 years and despite a healthy league position, all is not united at the club. Criticism aimed at manager David Moyes prompted him to remind their fans that they've never had it so good and he's seemingly yet to make up his mind over a new contract at the London Stadium. But if he can bring the Europa League title back to East London, in doing so, taking them into the Champions League, then I think the red carpet might be rolled out for life. The road to Dublin continues tonight as Bundesliga side Freiburg host West Ham in the last 16 of the Europa League live here on TalkSport. The third time they've met in this season's competition. Two wins from two for the Hammers after they topped their group, finishing three points ahead of the Germans. Let's get the team news from TalkSport's chief football commentator, Sam Matterface. Very good evening to you, Hugh. Good evening, everybody. Yes, Freiburg fought back from a 2-2 draw with Bayern on Friday night, but they aren't in great form. Centre-back um, Matthias Ginter has been a major issue for most of the season, but Christian Gunter plays for a second game in a week after missing most of the season with an Achilles issue. Vincenzo Grifo is their set-piece king with a record to rival James Ward-Prowse. Keep an eye on him tonight. This is how they start. Atabulo is their goalkeeper. Siladilia is their right-back. Ginter, Gulda and Gunter are the back four. A bit of German experience in that back line mixed with a lot of youthful enthusiasm. Hoffler will uh, patrol in front of the back four with the Japanese international Doan on the right, Grifo on the left, Ola and Eggestein behind Salai in attack. He was one of those who scored in that dramatic playoff game against Lens a couple of weeks ago. West Ham United, no Maxwell Cornet didn't travel to Germany because of a hamstring injury. Naya Fergerd hasn't made the trip either. Alphonse Ariola played a blinder against Everton, but Lucas Fabianski returns in goal tonight as he is the European and the Cup goalkeeper. So Fabianski is the only change from that victory over Everton. So far is the right back, Mavropano Zuma and Emerson, the back four. Alvarez and Ward-Prowse in the midfield with Kudos and Bakatar flanking Socek, who's just behind Bowen, who's got 17 goals and is their top scorer in attack. Johnson Cresswell, Antonio Phillips, Ings Ogbonna, George Earthy, Kalen Casey, Divine Mubama and Lewis Orford are on the bench for West Ham United should they need replacements. Sam, thank you very much. So, back-to-back league wins, lifting West Ham up to seventh in the Premier League. Before that, though, it was a run of eight without a win in 
all competitions. Freiburg ninth in the Bundesliga. Haven't won any of their last eight in all competitions inside 90 minutes. They did, as Sam mentioned, their hold by Munich to an encouraging draw last time out. And by reaching this stage, they have matched their best European season, which was last year. So um, maybe they can draw on those experiences to go one better. Although, beaten twice by West Ham, as I mentioned, so far this season in the Europa League, in the group stage, of course. Anyway, let's look ahead uh, to the game and react to some of that team news with Sam Matterface and the former Arsenal and England striker Leanne Sanderson. Good evening, Leanne. Good evening, Hugh. Uh, before we get to the teams, there's a there's a strange mood at West Ham United at the moment, isn't there? Because it got very negative after those eight games without a win, and, and David Moyes seemed pretty angry every time he answered a question in a press conference. A lot of needle involved, fans very much divided on his future, contract on the table, he says. Going to make his mind up in the coming months, but... Then we see the back-to-back wins against Brentford and Everton and suddenly, actually, it's a lot rosier at the club. Yeah, it is. And, I mean, we spoke we speak on the show every single week, don't we, Hugh? We had Jamie on from West Ham, you know, a couple of weeks mm. ago, the West Ham fan, and he was saying he felt the same as me. I mean, right now, you know, they're sitting seventh in the table. They're in the Europa League. They top that group, you know. So, you have to be realistic. But what I will say is, is the way they were losing games, Hugh. Now, it was their first win you know, against Brentford since before Christmas. So losing to Arsenal in the way they did, losing to Bristol in the FA Cup, you know, Bristol City, that, mm. they're poor results. And that game against Arsenal was probably one of the worst. I mean, the Sheffield United game the other day is probably up there as well, <laughs> let's be honest. But before yeah. that, I mean, it was one of the worst performances. And at times they look like mannequins, they look like cones. And I think that's why the fans are so frustrated. But when you look at the table, sitting in seventh in the Europa League, Europa Conference League last year, it's not a bad place to be in. So it's a weird one with David Moyes because I feel like the style of football that the fans want. I remember when they got Skamaka in and they wanted him and Antonio to play up top together mm. and he never did that, did he? It's a no. style of play. But Pakata's a good player but other than that, I mean, they've lost Declan Rice, one of the best players in the world and in seventh in the table, I think a lot of West Ham fans would take that. So sometimes I think you have to have a bit of realism as to where the club's really at. I'm not sure what the fans want sometimes. Absolutely, they should get better performances than they did against Arsenal but the last two against Brentford and Everton I've been, re- I've been really good and I think mm-hmm. I was surprised about the Brentford game because we were saying on the show weren't we Hugh it could be make or break for David Moyes and I, I feel like it's almost make or break all the time yeah. for David Moyes it's a weird one do you yeah. know what it's really interesting isn't it because I do think that the West Ham fans uh, get a little bit irked by sometimes the tone with which David Moyes suggests that they hardly won anything before he came along and saved them yes he has done a brilliant job but it is a club with a rich history. And even if it hasn't always been a successful one, there are traditions there that, that, that you know, the long-standing fans want to be respected. And ultimately, The West Ham way. Yeah, well, I mean, you can call it the West Ham way or whatever, but actually there's just a thirst, I think, in modern football to play in a certain progressive style, right? And also they were promised a lot when they, were, they had their tradition of Upton Park taken away from them and they were planted in uh, Stratford. Now, look, they've slowly but surely made that a much better place to be and they've slowly but surely, under the tutelage of David Moyes, made that club more competitive than it was before. But I do think that there is a massive disconnect between him and the supporters for whatever reason and I don't think that uh, I don't think that's going to be healable even if he does do, as you say, w- win this competition and then get them into the Champions League. I think even then it'll be time for him to, to leave at the end of the season. Let's pause for a moment and go to the Europa Conference League tonight. Uh, Brighton in action, their first ever European knockout time. What a place to go. The Stadio Olimpico facing Daniele De Rossi's Roma. They were two down at half time. The next goal, absolutely crucial. And it is in the back of the net. So who's it gone to, Ian Abrahams? It's gone to Roma. Roma 3, Brighton 0. And this could be the end of their European campaign, Hugh, I'm afraid, because this could take some coming back next Thursday at the Amex if it even stays like this it was a ball played in from the left hand side it was a free kick from the left hand side Mantini is the man who's put the ball in the back of there stretching on the volley four yards out on the uh, right hand side of the penalty and it is a goal check a VAR check for offside if this goal stands which I fancy it will then uh, that really is difficulty for Brighton they're going to have to score uh, certainly their unbeaten run away from home in this competition is over it's incredibly tight I've just seen another replay uh, that VAR decided I think it might stand it's at the moment Roma 3 Brighton 0 yeah I mean you're going to have to split that one with a hair it looks like it could be given 
on side with the benefit of doubt and I apologise Brighton fans relegating you to the Conference League momentarily there it is the Europa League uh, that one of course uh, for Brighton this evening about 3,500 Brighton fans travelling to Rome for the first leg you may or may not have heard in our news bulletin sadly two Seagulls fans stabbed in the build up to the game uh, uh, neither have non-life-threatening injuries. In fact, one has already been discharged from hospital. One remains in hospital. But we wish them both well. And, of course, we wish them both a full recovery. Busy night uh, already in European football. Just to let you know, elsewhere uh, in the Europa League, uh, well, Xavi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen, surprisingly, I think for many, 2-0 down against Karabag of Azerbaijan. And over on TalkSport 2, at Liverpool 4-1 up away from home against Sparta Prague. Uh, Luis Diaz with the fourth goal on the night for them. We'll head there uh, very, very shortly as well. But everything going swimmingly so far uh, for Jurgen Klopp's side. Um, let's talk about Rangers because Benfica have never lost a home match in 27 Europa League games. So it might be actually um, feeling like it's not the place that Rangers want to be. But it could be a good time because their opponents are still reeling from a 5-0 defeat to rivals Porto at the weekend. The team news ahead of an 8pm kickoff is in with Talk Sports David Tanner. Good evening. Here, good evening. Rangers have a lengthy absentee list for this one. Seven are injured, all attackers. Ross McCausland left Ibrox on crutches on Saturday, but it makes the bench tonight. Just two changes. McCausland's replacement is Fabio Silva, who starts against his former club. Tom Lawrence comes into midfield for Nico Rascan. Now, both clubs, as you mentioned, suffered shock defeats in their domestic leagues at the weekend. Rangers are still top of the Premiership after losing to Motherwell and Benfica are no longer leaders after that capitulation at Porto. Following that, they make five changes, but World Cup winners Angel De Maria and Nicolas Otamondi survive the cull. Otamondi was sent off at the weekend and also saw red when Rangers drew 3-3 at the Estadio de Luz four years ago under Steven Gerrard. A stoppage time goal, by the way, by Liverpool's Darwin Nunes denied Rangers a win that night. It's Benfica against Rangers. Kick-off in Lisbon is at eight. Uh, thank you very much. We'll discuss the uh, Conference League in a few moments. Before we get there, domestically, big game this evening in women's football because Arsenal are going to find out who they're going to face in the Conti Cup final this evening, the uh, women's version of the League Cup. Um, two sides above them in the actual league table meet in the other semi-final. Chelsea looking to set up a repeat of last season's showpiece hosting Manchester City. It was billed as a bit of a grudge match tonight. Uh, getting a one underway, well, very, very shortly at the Joy Stadium. Let's look ahead. We talk sports, Jeff Peters. Yeah, just about to get underway. Only goal difference separates Manchester City and Chelsea at the top of the league. City did win away at Chelsea recently, but there's so little between them, both in sensational form 11 wins in 12 for Chelsea 12 in a row for City and they name an unchanged side Lauren James is back from suspension for Chelsea Natalie Bjorn though is unavailable for this Loy Pauls for Khan with the other alteration as you say Arsenal will face the winners in the Conti Cup final at Molyneux at the end of the month we are now underway it's Man City nil Chelsea nil Let's head back uh, to events at the Stadio Olimpico. The third goal of the night, probably game over. This one could easily be tie-over. Ian Abrahams. 20 to go, you're right. Roma 4, Brighton 0. The third goal by Mancini was given. I have to say, it looked well offside to me, uh, certainly from the VAR check, but it was still given anyway. It doesn't matter now because Roma now have a fourth. Cristante heading the ball home from six yards out. Clever little ball from the left-hand side outside of the boot across goal. And I have to say, when you've got people like Van Heck and Dunk in the middle, I have to say, where were they? Because they were nowhere near Cristante, who's six yards out, headed into the back of the... This now could become any score, and you have to say the next week's game at the Amex is pretty much academic. It's Roma 4, Brighton 0. OK, let's head uh, to the Conference League. Aston Villa warming up for that huge Premier League clash with Spurs on Sunday with a trip to the Johan Cruyff Arena. Two former European Cup winners, of course, facing off. Watched by Jake Robson. 75 on the clock, it's Ajax nil, Aston Villa nil, and as you were hearing with Moose, that tie all but over. This one, very much the opposite, because going into next week, I mean, I can't even see a goal being scored here. It has been like that most of the game, both teams flattering to deceive, Villa making a whole host of changes, with uh, definitely more than half an eye uh, on that clash on Sunday that you mentioned against Tottenham. They have tried to up the ante in the second half. They've brought on the likes of Cash, McGinn, Bailey, Moreno and Zaniola, all of whom are named on the bench 
uh, this evening. Dean Aaron Bonham have just gone off. Diaby and Rogers went off a little earlier on as well. So let's see what's uh, what's going to be happening in the next few minutes. I have to say though, the best chances of the match, no doubt about it, have fallen to the home side. They had one in the first half, but they didn't convert through the striker Broby he slashed at one when he didn't even test the goalkeeper uh, Martinez and a few minutes ago Sosa and Taylor linking up well on the left for Ajax a 1-2 that ended with Taylor's shot from just inside the area straight at Martinez a good save to be fair but straight at the goalkeeper best chances for Ajax Villa well they may well be left to rue some uh, a lack of creativity and endeavour this time uh, in, in the return leg we shall see it's Ajax nil, Villa nil. Jake, thank you. And Nicolo Zaniolo off the bench, booked within two minutes, and he will miss at next week's tie at Villa Park. Uh, just to bring you up to date with the scores then in the Conference League at 5.45 kickoff, so about 73 minutes played. At Mulder 1, Club Bruges 0, Olympiacos 1, Maccabi Tel Aviv 3, and Sturm Graz 0, Lille 3. Uh, lots, of, of course, for us to look ahead to in this uh, hour as we build up to our kickoff between West Ham United and Freiburg here on kickoff you're listening to kickoff on Talksport with Labricks. we play together terms and conditions apply be gambleaware.org we'll have the closing stages of Sparta Prague versus Liverpool on Talksport 2 we'll dip in very very shortly and as I say have more build up to our live Europa League action stay with us kickoff on Talksport with Labricks. we play together terms and conditions apply 18 plus be gambleaware.org there are kids who want to grow carrots on the moon or start a company run by dolphins But to dream big, some children need a helping hand. That's why Tesco Stronger Start is committing £5 million to fund healthy food and activities for over 5,000 children's groups this year. And you can help too. Pick up your blue token in store to help children thrive in Leicester. Stronger Starts by Tesco. Every little helps. Tesco will fund £5 million worth of healthy food and activities to 5,000 children's groups by July 2024. Some say this place can be found at the end of a rainbow. We say it can be found at IKEA. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. It's Cheltenham, the jumps racing festival we've all been waiting for. And at William Hill, we're giving Cheltenham the respect it deserves with a standout offer for all new and existing customers. Get a £5 free bet every day this Cheltenham. That's right, a £5 free bet on any race every day of the festival with William Hill. We're Cheltenham ready, are you? Option required. Valid Feb 26 to March 15th. One £5 free bet per customer per day on any Cheltenham races. Promo capping limits and TNCs apply. 18 plus begambleaware.org. It was Mother's Day and an army of moon pigs were trotting forth. This little moon pig just wanted a cuddle. And this caring little moon pig made mum go wah, wah, wah all day long. For this Mother's Day, it must be a moonpig.com. Download the app now. With now, you can stream all the drama from the Premier League instantly and without a contract. The stuff the dreams are made of! This Sunday, title rivals collide as Liverpool take on Manchester City at Anfield. Can you believe it? Get all Sky Sports channels for a day or a whole month with a Now Sports membership. Stream Liverpool versus Manchester City live this Sunday from 3.45 with Now. 18 plus Sky Sports content streamed via internet. Full terms apply. On average, Rift get their customers three grand back. I'm like a rubber ball, I come down. Let's get the ball rolling. Search Rift Tax Refunds. Nothing beats Cheltenham. It's the top jockeys, the top horses. He's coming home strong up the hill. A roar for that first race. Unbelievable. And they're off. Spread this Cheltenham and get an offer on every race. Four days of world-class racing. I love the festival. It's the best jumps racing on the planet. Love Cheltenham. Bet Fred. Minimum of one offer per race at Cheltenham. Valid between 12th and 15th of March 2024. Team seats apply. Available in store and online. Offers may vary. 18 plus began the word org. Game day. The goals are calling. This Saturday, exclusive kick-by-kick commentary of Manchester United versus Everton. Coverage from 11, kick-off, 12.30 on Talk Sports. Making his entrance to the ring, please welcome AJ Anthony Joshua! This fight is my everything. My soul, my spirit, my mind, my body. If I lose it, you're going to have a really bad time, my friend. 
Luis Enrique Encano, it would be a big step back, the end of his career, really. This is AJ's hottest fight of all his fights. that he doesn't have a chin. I hope I had an opportunity to test that out. I just want to conquer and make everyone know that I'm the one who puts boxing on the map. Boxing's crazy, isn't it? Big story after big story in TalkSport. Uh, brings you an action-packed weekend across our platforms. Tune in Friday at 9pm for Knockout Chaos as Anthony Joshua takes on Francis Ngannou in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. You can join Adam Cattrall, Spencer Oliver, Hall of Famer Carl the Cobra Frotch is with us as well for a live watch along on the TalkSport Boxing YouTube channel. You can listen live, of course, via DAB, DAB Alexa or the TalkSport app. Uh, then on Saturday, you can watch live and exclusive boxing from 7pm on the TalkSport Boxing YouTube channel as GBM Sports brings you not one, but two title fights in the Sky Dome in Coventry. And if that's not enough, you can also tune into Fight Night on the TalkSport main station and YouTube channel from 9pm for all the fallout from events in Saudi Arabia. TalkSport really is the home of boxing. And we're not bad at football either. We've got live games uh, coming up for you tonight. One already going on over on TalkSport 2. Uh, Liverpool leading Sparta Prague by four goals to one. Here on TalkSport from 8pm, uh, we'll have West Ham's trip to Freiburg. Goals going in as well during that break. Uh, Leverkusen pulling a goal back at Carabag through Florian Vert and in the Conference League Maccabi Tel Aviv now 4-1 up at Olympiacos thanks to Dor Perez. OK, let's look ahead to this evening's games and get an odds update with Ladbrokes. Odds update on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus begambler.org And a chance to learn a little bit more about football on the continent with Nicola McGeady. Good evening. Good evening, Hugh. How are you? Very, very well. Um, is this one an easy one to call in terms of the bookmakers? West Ham have already beaten Freiburg twice this season, so it's fairly straightforward or not? Um, well, it's closer than you think, uh, but as you said, it's looking good for West Ham. They've got a 100% record against the Bundesliga side, um, and as you said, they're meeting for the third time this season alone. It is very close, though, in the betting. Not a great deal between them in terms of the match odds. We make the hammer 6-4, to four, the home side are 9-5. to five and the draw is 11-5. But as you can expect, over 60% of bets are in favour of West Ham tonight. And in terms of qualifying, it is good news for West Ham. They are odds on a 4-7 to seven to book a place in the quarter final. West Ham, they're going to be coming here on a high after they beat Everton 3-1 and then Brentford before that. So, you know, the tide is turning on the domestic front and they come here with an almost fully fit squad. So all signs are positive, I think, for West Ham tonight. Um, the other side, they just lack consistency, um, although they have been consistent when it comes to scoring goals, and both teams to score tonight is 5-6. to six. I do think we would see goals tonight going off recent results, so I'm surprised over 2.5 goals is in shorter, but it's a decent price at 11-10, to 10, while both teams to score in over 2.5 goals is 6-4. to four. I suppose, Q, the big question is, can West Ham go all the way to the final in mm. Dublin? Um, well, they're currently 16-1 to one to do that, and I can assure you at the top of the betting, Liverpool will be shortening up from their 13-8 to 8 price right now after that very dominant mm. display. Uh, I think we'll get goals tonight. It's Rangers, of course, going away to Benfica, two giant football clubs, but Rangers always punch above their weight in Europe, especially over the last few years. Are you expecting them to get something in Portugal? I think so. You know, I think they're going to get something out of this. And as you said, in Europe, they have been doing so well. It'll be interesting in terms of who can pick themselves up after they both had defeats over the weekend with Rangers suffering a shock one against Motherwell. But in, in general, under Philippe Clement, they have been doing so well. At home, Benfica are so strong domestically, but they haven't been up to scratch in their European encounters. They've just won one in their last four. So that will be music to Rangers fans' ears, I think. And, uh, you know, they are up against it tonight. They're 4-1 to one in the match betting. The home side clear favourites at four to seven, and for those who think Rangers can get something from this, which I do, and I think you do too, maybe mm, Hugh, mm. it was sixteen to five. Same for qualification. Rangers are the underdogs at two to one, but they'll be desperate just to get something out of this, and then I think they can go on and win at the eyebrows. We know how tough a place it is to go for any travelling team, and they've already shown in Europe that they're, you know, they are a tough team to beat. So plenty of optimism and support for the draw tonight. 
Keeping our eyes on Fakaya Tomori and Ruben Loftus-Cheek for AC Milan tonight. They're taking on Slavia Prague. Do you expect them to have an impact? Um, not really. This one looks <laughs> pretty one-sided with AC Milan. Clear favourites at 1-2. to Slavia Prague are really up against it at the San Siro. Uh, they're 11-2 to, to cause an upset. The draw is 16-5. Although it has to be said, AC Milan, they're not in the best of form coming here, having just won two in their last five. However, at the San Siro, their form is on fire, so I can't see anything but a home win. The golfing class, I think, should be clear to see in this one. And AC Milan, they're two to seven to qualify and third favourites in the competition now, right at seven to one to go all the way. So, yeah, I do. I fancy AC Milan to win to nil tonight and that's five to four. Uh, Nicola, thank you very much. That was a look at the latest odds with Labrooks. It's 18 plus. Make sure you check out BeGambleAware.org. Odds update on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus BeGambleAware.org. It's all going off uh, in Ajax. Uh, let's go over to Jake Robson where there's been two red cards. Tell us more. Goodness me, 86 on the clock. It's Ajax nil, Aston Villa nil. And barely anything's happened in this game. It's all been reserved really for the final five minutes. As you said, we've seen double red. First up, Esri Konza. He was booked early on or midway through, I should say, in the first half. He's then got the substitute Tuba Akpom remember him he's playing for Ajax he's running through on goal and then Konza brings him down I have to say it was one of those where I guess it probably is a second yellow if you if you look at it that way Konza really felt that it was a 50-50 tussle the result is that Akpom was brought down and the referee has given Konza a second yellow card Tristan Guya as well the man to be sent off for Villa a couple of minutes later a second yellow for him and the perhaps slight advantage that Ajax might have had well obviously that has now been frittered away as it's 10 v 10 as far as the actual on field actual goal mouth action goes it has been extremely sparse in this match Ajax with the best two chances really one in either half they squandered them both and it looks like we're going to go back to Aston Villa next week uh, all square three to play Ajax nil Aston Villa nil Let's go to the Conti Cup semi-final. We've already got a goal. Jeff Peters. Yeah, Chelsea leading Manchester City here by a goal to nil. Scored by Lauren James after eight minutes. And Manchester City, the architects of their own downfall. Alexandra gave the ball away. A misplaced pass. Um, it was Myra Ramirez who pushed forward. Played it into the path of James. Her shot took a deflection. It wrong-footed Keating. And they made another mistake not long after that through Wahabi. And it allowed Ramirez a chance. But her her effort was blocked so Chelsea are on top here as Man City come looking to get on level terms but they shoot off target really bright open start here Manchester City nil Chelsea won a uh, positive news for Liverpool fans uh, Mo Salah back out on the pitch today as he returns from injury got back to training on Tuesday he's just put the ball in the back of the net against Roma but it has been disallowed for offside anyway he's made a positive impact straight away so he looks like he'll be in good form for the big game against Manchester City at the weekend we'll be there uh, very very shortly they still lead Sparta Prague by four goals to one over on Talk Sport 2 lots still to come in the build up to our game live game here between Freiburg and West Ham you're listening to kickoff on Talksport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. It's 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Kickoff on Talksport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Place they call the home of home inspiration, where a family of four can feast for 15 pounds. Where free workshops bring kids' imaginations to life. And some of your favorite products now have even lower prices. Some say this place can be found at the end of a rainbow. We say it can be found at IKEA. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. There will be 14 minutes of extra time. With Betfair's 90-minute payout, you don't have to wait for the final whistle to celebrate. Because your winning bet will be paid out in full at 90 minutes. Betfair. Applies to match odds 90 market or markets with a 90 icon. Sportsbook exclusive. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Your call is really important to us. (sighs) Waiting. Frustrating, isn't it? Especially when you've got plans. 
Whether you're thinking of revamping your home or looking for ways to move your business forward, we'll help you get there with finance that's right for you. So don't let your plans get stuck on hold. Join over a million customers who trust us to deliver the right finance solutions to get them moving. Search navuna.co.uk and get there sooner with Navuna. You know how the best ideas come in the shower? Well, here's one for you. Switching to an energy-efficient shower head is more efficient because it saves water and could save you up to £40 a year on energy bills. And that's worth singing about. Shower, save, repeat. It all adds up. Find more energy-saving tips at gov.uk forward slash save energy. The biggest rugby tournament of the year is coming to a Green King pub near you. Watch all the unmissable action live as Europe's top six battle it out for glory in the Six Nations tournament. In and out, in and out, for the line! Leave your rivalries at the door and get their team together to watch the Six Nations. Feel the excitement and the buzz of coming together to enjoy matchday food and drink at your nearest Green King sports pub. Scores in the corner! The Six Nations and Green King. 18 plus drinkaware.co.uk Here they are, the racing lovers of the UK, phone in hand, ready to play the Coral Reward Shaker. Look at them shake. We've got the regulars of the race course shaking their phone with confidence. And look, they've won a free bet. Parents on a day out just happy to be here. They've done it too. An odds booster for them. Lovely stuff. Everyone's a winner. Play Coral's free reward shaker this Cheltenham to win guaranteed daily rewards and offers. Coral, we're here for it. 18 plus UK. Max one reward or offer per player per day. Reward restrictions, requirements and T's and C's apply. Take time to think. On 1089 and 1053 medium wave, on your mobile and on your smart speaker, Cheltenham is coming. Starts this Monday on Talk Sport. Talk Sport News. It's a very busy night of European action. Five British clubs taking to the field in the Europa and Europa Conference League. We'll have full commentary between Freiburg and West Ham here from 8 pm. Before that, let's get the latest headlines with Max Scott. Cheers, Hugh. Christian Horner says he's unable to comment on private matters after a female colleague who accused him of inappropriate behaviour was suspended. Horner was cleared following a review and Red Bull have declined to comment on an internal matter. TalkSport understands Leicester face potential legal challenges from championship rivals if they're found to have breached financial rules. Promotion candidates like Southampton will consider action if Leicester get promoted on the back of overspending. Liverpool's injury play continues as Ibrahim Kanate has been subbed off after pulling up in their Europa League clash with Sparta Prague. And West Ham's tie with Freiburg is live here on TalkSport. Fabianski's come in for Areola in the only change from the side that beat Everton. Hello, I'm Johnny Cash. I've got loads of cash. When I was just a young man, my mama would instill. Always be a good boy, don't go out with Brazil. But I met him for a vino. Just to watch him buy The drinks are on me, everybody And now 15 races later I feel like I could die The Cheltenham Festival Survivor's Breakfast This Monday morning from 6 Live from Jack Dawes Castle On TalkSport Always drink responsibly, be gamblerware.org Don't do what Alan does you're listening to kick off here on TalkSport. Hugh was and Croft in the seat. We'll be with uh, Sam Matterface very, very soon and Leanne Sanderson um, ahead of our commentary between Freiburg and West Ham United. I'm just looking up at the screens. The full-time whistle has gone in Amsterdam. Let's get the report from Jake Robson. Ajax no, Aston Villa no. That is full-time. Not a 90 minutes to write home about for either side, really. Villa making five changes for it with that impending Premier League showdown against Tottenham on Sunday and they never really got going I have to say the game really spluttered into life with about five minutes to go when we had a red card apiece one for either side both for second bookable offences Esri Konza was shown one and uh, the right back for Ajax Tristan Goyer as well similar situations both of them bringing down players when they'd already been on yellow cards not really much of a complaint as far as I was concerned they of course said their piece with the referee I think Villa will probably be the less happy of the two sides Ajax they'll fancy their chances coming over here next week not really much uh, trouble that they were in at all this, uh, this evening and that's how it finished Ajax nil Aston Villa nil 
Right, remember, uh, here on TalkSport, a very important evening for West Ham United. Uh, venturing into the knockout stages uh, tonight in the Europa League, heading to Freiburg, trying to put one foot in the quarterfinals just by picking up a solid result to bring back to the London Stadium. And I think you can define that result for Aston Villa as solid, if not uninspiring. But let's get a team news recap ahead of our live game here on TalkSport with Sam Masterface. Well, Freiburg have uh, kept the same team that drew 2-2 on Friday night with Bayern Munich. Another bloody nose for Thomas Tuchel's men and Freiburg dispatched it. Although they haven't won in their last six games um, in the Bundesliga. And they'll look to try and put that right against the West Ham team who've already beaten them twice this season. Watch out for Grifo playing from the left-hand side. He takes all the set pieces. Salah, who plays up front. You might have seen him play against England for... um, Hungary, he scored in the playoff round against Lens as they mounted a comeback to win that game and earn a place in the last 16 to play West Ham, who have made just the one change from their victory over Everton. And it was Fabianski switching in for Ariola, who had a great game during that match at Goodison Park. The rest of the team looks like this. So foul is the right back. Mavropanos, Zuma and Emerson the back four. Alvarez and War Prowse holding in midfield with Kudos, Socek and Pagatar behind Jared Bowen in attack. Let's quickly go to TalkSport 2 for the final minute of Liverpool's game against Sparta Prague, which we brought you live. I can tell you that Dominic Zoboslai has just made it a five-star performance for Liverpool because they are 5-1 up now. But let's get the closing stages nonetheless with the former West Ham defender Scott Minto and TalkSport's Joe Shannon. Sort of overran it, overplayed it, should have played it a little bit early and by the time he took the shot, there was a couple of defenders coming down on him. But he was able to get the short shot away. And in the end, Jurgen Klopp must be absolutely delighted with this. He certainly will as we welcome listeners from Talk Sport. The final whistle goes in Prague and Liverpool surely are already through to the Europa League quarterfinals. They have won here by five goals to one on what has been an almost perfect night for Jurgen Klopp who will now have the opportunity to rest players in between the... Uh, Manchester City game in the Premier League on Sunday and the quarter-final of the FA Cup. Manchester United the following weekend, the game that is live on Talk Sport because the second leg will surely be a non-event here. Alexis McAllister got the scoring started early on from the penalty spot. Two very well-taken goals from Darwin Nunez had Liverpool 3-0 up at half-time. Sparta Prague did create numerous chances and Conor Bradley's own goal made it 3-1 very early on in the second half. But Luis Diaz and Dominic Saboslai scored for Liverpool to give them a deserved 5-1 victory. Mo Salah got onto the field off the bench. His first appearance since mid-February after injury. He did get on the score sheet. He had a goal ruled out after a VAR check for offside. Still not quite sure exactly why that was disallowed. But a great night all round for Liverpool. And now the prospects of Manchester City in the Premier League to come at the weekend full time Sparta Prague 1 and Sparta Prague 1 Liverpool 5 yeah so a uh, fantastic night for Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool and Joe is absolutely right it will give them the ability to concentrate on the bigger games over the next week that they have of course Manchester City this week Ken, Ken I mean, are Manchester United going to be a problem for Liverpool in the FA Cup? I'm not sure, but yeah, they get to rest players next Thursday uh, at home as they take a three-goal lead into that second leg. Uh, It hasn't been a great first leg out in Rome for Brighton in the Europa League. They trail by four goals to nil. They're into the final minute of time added on. Let's go to Talk Sports, Ian Abrahams. Yes, a defeat in Rome, which looks like being tournament ending, if I'm really honest for it for Brighton they were behind on 12 minutes long ball through the middle of the park not cut out by Lewis Dunk and uh, Diabala went round goalkeeper Jason Steele put it in the net there was a lengthy VAR check of a couple of minutes but he was cleared as being onside uh, played onside by Tarek Lamp that was 1-0 2-0 before half time though Romelu Lukaku had had a header really well saved early on by Steele didn't miss when again long ball over the top right hand side a uh, bad touch by Dunk didn't get a chance for a second one straight onto it was Romelu Lukaku inside the penalty area and beat Steele at his near post Brighton had chances in the first half limited 
though, and Dingle with a shot which came back off the post after being deflected. And Welbeck with a header. He also had a header in the second half, Welbeck. But uh, really, second half belonged to Roma after Lukaku had a shot saved. And by the way, the final whistle has just gone. Mancini stretched to reach a ball in from the left hand side and score. Did look offside, but it was given after VAR check. And Cristante headed in from six yards out uh, to make it 4 0. That was before the 70 minute mark. The second leg will be at the Amex Stadium next week. But after defeat in the Eternal City, Brighton's interest in this competition, Hugh, looks anything but eternal. It finished Roma 4, Brighton 0. Really intrigued to know how the Brighton fans feel about Roberto De Zerbi and their Brighton team right now. It's not the first time this season that they have faced a heavy defeat. Yes, I know it's away from home. It's a big game against Roma. But um, I'm intrigued to know what they think about the style because errors at the back have kind of typified some of the goals they've conceded and we saw that again this evening. Could they be a little bit more pragmatic and kept themselves in the tie going into the second leg? Because now they need a miracle. Anyway, Sports Bar coming up at 10pm. You'll be able to have your say. 03717 And if you want to send the guys a voice note now, you can do that on WhatsApp at the same number. Just tell us your name, who you support. Give us your view on any of the five 45 kickoffs um, and the results there. Villa fans, Liverpool fans, make sure you get in touch too. Let's just run you through the results then from the five 45 kickoffs in Europe this evening. Uh, as you just heard, Roma 4, Brighton 0. Finished Carabag 2, Bayer Leverkusen 2. Uh, Xavier Alonso side coming from two goals down in that game to take a vital draw back to Germany. As you heard over on TalkSport 2, we brought you Sparta Prague 1, Liverpool 5. Uh, in the Europa Conference League, both Ajax and Aston Villa had a man sent off in a goalless draw. Mulder beat Club Bruges by two goals to one. It finished Olympiacos 1, Maccabi Tel Aviv 4. And another big away win for Lille as they beat Sturm Graz by three goals to nil. Much more to come this evening. No less with our game Freiburg taking on West Ham from 8pm. But it's time now to look ahead to the latest football action with Labrooks. The Big Preview on Talk Sport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Uh, Leanne Sanderson, the former Lionesses forward, and Sam Matterface will be with you for the game. Let's quickly talk about British clubs, in, in fact, English clubs, let's call it that, in European competition. And the reason that I, I, I refer to English clubs primarily is because for a lot of people, it's all about which nation will get that extra Champions League spot. Fans of Villa, Spurs, Manchester United may be listening most closely to this at the moment. As it stands, both Italy and Germany will be getting an extra spot, but England not far behind in third place. And when you look at the competitions, you think English clubs could go deeply and Manchester City, excuse me, uh, Liverpool and Aston Villa are favourite in their respective competitions. Manchester City favourites in the Champions League as well. So for those three, do you think they can go all the way? Yeah, I mean, I said it before. We said it on the show loads of times here about Arsenal, but obviously they've got that second second leg against Porto, and I don't want to fit that same agenda. Everyone says Arsenal is crumble at the final hurdle or when it, when it really gets difficult and the pressure. So I think if they lose that, it will be a real devastation for the fans. But I think with Manchester City, they like you know people said this year they don't look as good as they was last year, but they won the like the treble last year. So big expectations at the club, but they finally feel like you know it's quite finally coming into fruition. I think. You know, when you look at the teams from England in its entirety, you know, Brighton losing tonight 4-0 in the first leg against Roma, that, that's not a great result, is it? Well, it's so, not a great result for the coefficient, Leanne, because obviously Italy are one of those clubs that England are competing with yeah. to try and get that extra place in the Champions League next year. So that doesn't help the coefficient. Uh, the Bayer Leverkusen result ended 2-2, so they've come back from two mm-hmm. goals down, which shows the powers that Chabi Alonso's got to recover. Germany, another one that they're competing. That's why this game's massive, this tie's massive, because Germany is another cl- uh, country that uh, England is competing with, so West Ham could do us a massive favour by winning these two legs. Yeah, and Aston Villa as well, I think. Obviously, they're doing bits in the Conference League, and we saw the magnitude of that last year when West Ham won it. So every club has different goals and aspirations, and I think, you know, with Aston Villa this year, they're absolutely flying under Uriah Emery. So, you know, it's good to see the teams doing well, but I just think, yeah, that result for Brighton, especially first leg, is going to be difficult for them to come back from. But I think other teams like Manchester United and Tottenham are obviously going to be eagerly anticipating, you know, if there's another team that gets to go into the Champions League, Ultimately, Hugh, I always say, you know, with the teams like Manchester United, is the squad good enough at this moment in time to really compete in the Champions League? It's not. So it's all very well getting there. Great, like we did last year and we're in it this year and it just can't compete. So you need a better squad. 
Yeah, well, I think several of our sides need to improve in European competition in terms of what we produce this season. It's not going to be enough to get us that extra spot every year. And I know that's what fans want. You're not going to be perfect in every single season. And of course, there is strong competition. But with the strength of the Premier League, actually, it's the Champions League where I think sides could have done a lot better. We've seen in previous years, haven't we? We've, we've kind of got four teams into the last eight of the Champions League. If we could have done that... It would have been a massive, massive boost. In the end, wasn't to be. We had two sides finishing bottom of their group. And that, in the end, is, is probably what could cost England that fifth spot in the Champions League. Long way to go, but after tonight's results, maybe not too uh, confident about England picking up the extra place. We shall see. Anyway, long way to go, like I mentioned. Um, all thanks to Labrooks, that conversation. 18 plus, BeGambleAware.org. The Big Preview on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, BeGambleAware.org. And let's get a quick update on the Conti Cup semi-final. Big game between Manchester City and Chelsea at the Joy Stadium, watched by Jeff Peters. Well, Chelsea are still leading by a goal to nil here. Lauren James, the 15th goal that she scored for club and country this season. Manchester City not at their fluent best today by any stretch of the imagination. We've had 32 minutes, Manchester City nil, Chelsea 1. Fast approaching kickoff between Freiburg and West Ham in the last 16 of the Europa League. Kickoff comes next here on Talksport. Kickoff on Talksport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleware.org. Sometimes running a business can feel like swimming upstream in Siberia. Welcome. With a bear clinging onto your leg. <laughs> But Zero Online accounting software can help you manage the ins and outs of your finances in real time. So you can keep them running smoothly. Soon it will feel more like you're going down a water slide. Your turn. In a rubber ring. Or being serenaded by a string quartet. Search Zero with an X. Because healthy business is beautiful business. Giddy up, Cheltenham's back, and it's time for some full-on festival fever. Huzzah! And to celebrate the pinnacle event of the jump racing calendar, TalkSport Bet has got a super sign-up offer for all our valued new customers. Simply open a new account, opt in, make your first deposit, place a £10 bet on any horse race at evens or higher, and get a free £1 bet for every race on every day of Cheltenham. TalkSportBet.com, Bally good broadcaster, bring it on, bookie. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. BeGambleAware.org. At Honda, we've been engineering cars for over 70... Four! 75 years, actually. We know that excellence takes time. So you can rely on the Honda engineering in the all-new ENY1. With a range of up to 250 miles on a single charge and up to five years warranty, servicing and roadside assistance. Our first electric SUV, the ENY1. Oh, a hole-in-one. Yes! Honda. The power of dreams. Range based on test conditions and may vary. It's Cheltenham, the jumps racing festival we've all been waiting for. And at William Hill, we're giving Cheltenham the respect it deserves with a standout offer for all new and existing customers. Get a £5 free bet every day this Cheltenham. That's right, a £5 free bet on any race every day of the festival with William Hill. We're Cheltenham ready, are you? Option required. Valid Feb 26 to March 15th. One £5 free bet per customer per day on any channel and races. Promo capping limits and TNCs apply. 18 plus begambleaware.org. With now, you can stream all the drama from the Premier League instantly and without a contract. The stuff the dreams are made of! This Sunday, title rivals collide as Liverpool take on Manchester City at Anfield. Can you believe it? Get all Sky Sports channels for a day or a whole month with a Now Sports membership. Stream Liverpool versus Manchester City live this Sunday from 3.45 with now. 18 plus Sky Sports content streamed via internet. Full terms apply. You know how the best ideas come in the shower? Well, here's one for you. Switching to an energy efficient shower head is more efficient because it saves water and could save you up to £40 a year on energy bills. And that's worth singing about. Shower, save, repeat. It all adds up. Find more energy saving tips at gov.uk forward slash save energy. Nothing beats Cheltenham. He's the top jockeys, the top horses. He's coming home strong up the hill. A roar for that first race. Unbelievable. And they're off. Bet Fred this Cheltenham and get an offer on every race. Four days of world class racing. I love the festival. It's the best jumps racing on the planet. Love Cheltenham. Bet Fred. 
Minimum of one offer per race at Cheltenham. Valid between 12th and 15th of March 2024. Team seats apply. Available in store and online. Office may vary. 18 plus began with the word Passion. Heartbreak. Glory. Despair. Triumph. And they're back in the game. Europa League Live. What a finish. On Talk Sport. <laughs> It's going to be lashed in on the rebound. Roland Salai denied initially by Fabianski, but there was no stopping him at the second attempt. Freiburg are a good team, and we all need to play very well to, to get a result. Bowen, who's running through on goal, he shoots and scores and wins the Europa Conference League final for West Ham United. That moment in summer was, it just makes you want it more. It was the first trophy that I've, I've ever won, and you know, that kind of hunger it gives inside you to, to give again for you know, your, your teammates and then for the fans as well it's you know special for everyone with a cross from the right hand side good delivery and it's headed home by Packetar Freiburg nil West Ham 1 well, there's a bit of history between West Ham and Freiburg. And no, it's not just because they're meeting in the last 16 of the Europa League tonight and it's the third time they've played against each other this season. It's because they first met almost 100 years ago in May of 1924 when the Londoners became the first English team to visit Germany after the end of the First World War six years earlier. They just finished a first ever top flight campaign. They went out for a five match postseason tour, which saw the Hammers beat Cologne, Mannheim, Munchen Gladbach and Frankfurt before their final game against Freiburg, which their hosts won by five goals to two, inflicting West Ham's first ever away defeat by European opposition. They're out to avoid another tonight, live on TalkSport. Kickoff coming at 8 pm. Let's hear from the West Ham boss David Moy speaking ahead of the tie in Germany. He said his side are starting to hit form at the right time. I obviously want us to have an, another another great run in, in Europe. I would like us also to finish strong and hopefully qualify for Europe again uh, in the league. I, I agree. We we've had a uh, we've had a month or so where we've not been so good, but I think that uh, we're back on form at the moment. We've won two two good games recently, and uh, I just sense that we're beginning to get back to to where we should be. So I hope that we can show that. So David Moyes, uh, very positive heading into this game. Let's go back to Sam Matterface and the former Arsenal and Juventus forward Leanne Sanderson. Let's talk about West Ham possibly prioritising the Europa League. Uh, in terms of how far they can go in this competition, does it depend on basically putting it front and centre a little bit like they did in terms of winning the Europa Conference League? We know that meant 14th in the Premier League last season. That won't happen this time around, but it certainly did affect their domestic form. Do you think it will happen again this season? Yeah, no. I mean, I think, you know, with the fans, I think it's interesting to know what exactly what they want, but they're top of the group, you know, won five games in the group, lost one, seventh in the Premier League. But I think last year when they won the Europa Conference League, you know, they finished like 16th in the league and it was almost like no one was really talking about the league. But I think this year, there's more emphasis on where they are in the league and the performances they're having. So, I think with West Ham fans, like I said, you have to have a realistic perspective on the squad they have. And with David Moyes, I think they are somewhat overachieving with the individuals they have. And that sounds crazy to say. I'm not talking about the Arsenal game before people jump down my throat. I'm talking about overall, when you look at the squad they have, is David Moyes maximising the individuals? Some might say that, some might say not. But I think the style of play that he plays is not what the fans would want. But sometimes you have to be careful what you wish for, Hugh, because mm. someone else might come in there and they're seventh, they're in the Europa League. But this, co- this competition is not an easy competition to win. So just because they're in it doesn't... I think we're, as English teams, we expect we should win everything. We're in. I get that. But there's some still good teams within this competition. And Europa Conference League is completely different to the Europa, Le- Europa League. Last year, Arsenal were expected to win it, then they didn't. It's not an easy competition to win. But the fact that if they do win it... Imagine if they were to win it. Mm. Very, very if they were to win big it. Big if. Big if. They then qualify for the Champions League. That's crazy. What world are we in when 7th place West Ham, 8th place Newcastle and 9th place Brighton are asking, we're asking questions about are they all going in the right direction? Mm. The answer is, quite broadly, yes, they're all going in the right direction. Maybe not necessarily at the pace, not as smoothly as maybe everybody would like. But those three clubs should be immune to scrutiny, I think, 
I mean, West Ham United have got a slightly different problem. The relationship between the manager and the fans is fractured. That's a different issue. But West Ham are seventh in the Premier League. You know, you just said, are they going to focus on this competition? No, they're not. They're not going to put all their eggs in this basket because they can finish sixth. They think they can finish above Manchester United this year. And there's a distinct possibility that they can. Mm -hmm. I understand that. And a focus on the Premier League is, yeah, is important. But when you think about what that Conference League title has done for West Ham United in terms of the memories and the moments that the fans shared, you know, we always have this argument over trophies versus, you know, we talk about top four, you know, would you take a, a League Cup or a top four finish when we're talking about other clubs, yeah, for you example? You can do both. You can do both. This yeah. stage of the season, if you're, in the, if you're in this competition and you're challenging for the league, you can do both. You can, you can, you've got the, a big enough squad to be able to do that. But I don't, I don't know, Sam, if West Ham do have a big enough squad. If I'm being honest, I think individually, there's certain players like Pakata, James Walprouse, obviously Bowen, good players. But I think, you know, the demand that we've seen in Newcastle this year, it was always going to be difficult for them in the Champions League with the squad that they have. So I think, again, Sam's right what he said about the fractured relationship between David Moyes and the fans, but seventh in the league. And sometimes I think, you know, what do these fans want? You know, these clubs are not that big. They're big clubs, but relatively speaking... When it comes to individuals, I think they're maximising what they've got. Just very quickly as we look ahead to the game, Leanne, some of those special players in the West Ham team, who do you expect to have an effect tonight? I mean, Jared Bowen, obviously, top player, you know, bagging a hat-trick against Brentford and people are talking a lot about him being picked for England. I still don't think it's a foregone conclusion, but I think Pakata, I like him a lot, you know, when he's on the ball, getting in between the lines and, you know, they've got some good players, but again, those players have to play at their best for West Ham to have a chance in this competition individually. OK, all right. Well, listen, this game, uh, just the start, if you like, of the weekend, the long run into the weekend tomorrow night on TalkSport 2. Big championship action. Important fixture for both the top and bottom. Sheffield Wednesday taking on Leeds on Saturday lunchtime. Our exclusive kickoff here in the Premier League on TalkSport is Manchester United against Everton. We'll have two uh, games for you on TalkSport 2. Lunchtime, Cardiff Ipswich, Wolves versus Fulham in the Premier League at 3pm before more live games on Sunday as well. Huddersfield, West Brom at midday. Tottenham, Manchester City in the women's FA Cup quarterfinal all ends exclusively on Monday night with Chelsea against Newcastle but I'll leave you with West Ham United not phased by Europa League knockout football a third straight season in European football for the club that best run in history they're certified European champions the question is can they go one better this year it's the last 16 of the Europa League live on TalkSport as Freiburg hosts West Ham with the former England striker Leanne Sanderson and TalkSport Sam Matterface Hugh thank you very much it wasn't long ago that there was a whiff of revolt in the air at West Ham United, but in the university town of Freiburg, southwest Germany, protests have been quelled and the focus has turned to passing the latest exam. Eight matches without a win led for demands to do better, but after Premier League victories over Brentford and Everton, the gaze turns back to Europe and to Germany. And German might just be David Moyes' specialist subject. West Ham graduated through the group stage, top of the class, in no small part thanks to home and away victories over Freiburg. But the Germans won their other three home matches in the Europa League. And on Friday night, they frustrated Bayern Munich here. They are a club that play the underdog very well. They have a reputation in Germany of pulling tough situations back from the brink. A bit like those at the nearby university who are predicted to fail, cram and ace their final exam. Referee tonight, Alejandro Hernandez Hernandez, who once failed to give a goal that was a goal in a game involving Barcelona. Tonight... He will take charge of Freiburg against West Ham. A third meeting of these two over the course of this season. They met twice in the group stage. Victory on both occasions for West Ham United. Unchanged, apart from the goalkeeper from the weekend victory against Everton. And Freiburg with uh, white jerseys, with red sleeves, red shorts and red socks. Attacking the goal away to our left. We'll watch West Ham all in blue kick off in the first half. Atabolu. Sedilia, Ginta, Gulda, Gunter the back four. Herfler in midfield with Doan, Egestein, Holla and Grifo on the flank behind Salai in attack. And West Ham United already on the offensive with the ball cleared upfield and over the halfway line. So, Leanne Sanderson, European night's always special, but how do West Ham make it three wins on the spin against Freiburg? Here's an early chance into the box, goes towards Salai, who gets uh, challenged by Sofau as the ball comes down the right-hand side and into the area. 
Yeah, it's, you know, you can see in this competition, you have to stay switched on. We saw last year in the conference league when Aaron Cresswell got sent off in that game and they can create an opportunity for Freiburg at any time. We've mentioned it, Sam, two games, you know, 2-0 and 2-1. It wasn't like the easiest, to put, easiest games for West Ham, so they need to stay switched on. Well, Freiburg have started on the front foot. They have a corner over on the far side which is whipped in towards the near post it's headed away by Emerson then Kudus will scramble it clear towards the halfway line uh, it's uh, a tightly packed stadium this the uh, Stadion und uh, Winkelsdorf and uh, it's uh, got two tiers all the way round the grass looks a little bit patchy it must be said and uh, I'm sure that uh, West Ham United would love to escape from here with a victory tonight to take back to London next week. A minute and a half played. West Ham attacking the goal away to our right. Atabulu, the goalkeeper, has it at his feet for Freiburg. Inside the area, just takes a couple of steps to his right. All in grey today. And then threatens to kick it, waits, invites the press from West Ham that isn't forthcoming. They're not overcommitting here. And Freiburg will play out from the back. One thing I think West Ham fans could be excited about is these four players, you know, Bowen, James Warprowse, Mohamed Kudus and Pakatar. Once they get going, they're interchangeable. You can see James Warprowse early on dropping into that nine role. Gerard Bowen equally comfortable dropping in the ten. And I think the interchangeability between those players is really key. But then at the back, you know, with Zuma and Sufal, they need to make sure they sharp shop in those situations because you can't be leaking goals within this competition. Sofal sends the ball in towards the edge of the area. It's chested down by Sochek inside the box right at the top of the 18-yard area. Doan will take it away to the far side being chased by Paqueta and uh, by James Ward-Prowse and it escapes over on the far side and goes out for a throw-in. Freiburg have battled back from deficits in each of their last three home games against Eintracht, Frankfurt, Lons and Bayern Munich, so West Ham will have to be on guard, even if they do hit the front tonight. But overall, the Germans are not in great form. They haven't won any of their last six league games. Ball loose in midfield, and before the escape can go on from uh, Zalai, free kick is given against the Hungarian, and West Ham have a free kick five yards inside Freiburg territory. You mentioned it, Sam. You know, I think a lot of people expect when the English team are in these competitions, playing against a team in the Bundesliga currently sitting in ninth, it's a full goal conclusion. It doesn't work like that. Some teams, you know, seem to be able to turn it on. Could a lovely ball into the box, headed into the air, and it goes high towards the goal line. Claims that it went behind the line and out for a set piece, and that's what's been given. I think it came off the head of Eggstein, who rose and headed it into the air, and the corner eventually given by our referee tonight. And uh, it is. Uh, out on this near side and away for a corner. This is where I think West Ham can really capitalise. James Warprow's got one of the best deliveries probably in the world. His delivery's fantastic and he makes taking set pieces look so easy. I think someone that's really underplayed within the men's game of late. Most of them struggle to beat the front post and it always astounds me. Here is Warprow's. Right-footed, arcing the ball away from the goalkeeper towards the penalty spot. It's a strong header away. He's already pushing and shoving inside the penalty area. And that header from Ginter is irrelevant, but it was a strong one. Socek, who was penalised inside the box for pushing over. He uh, crunched into the back, I think, of Herfler. Yeah, definite foul. Good delivery from James Ward-Prowse. Ginter was in the right area. Definite free kick in the end from Socek. And Freiburg have the ball again. The captain on this near touchline. Gunter tries to send it forward. Grifo retrieves it as it escapes off the perimeter of the pitch towards the technical area. There's a huge technical area down below us, which is being patrolled at this moment in time by the manager of uh, Freiburg, Christian Streich. And what they do do, Freiburg is carrying an attacking threat, Leanne. They are the competition's top scorers. West Ham have to be alert to that, or were the top scorers in the competition before Liverpool started today. Yeah, they do have to be alert, and obviously Grifo scoring as well from set pieces, being really dangerous from those areas, not to give away cheap free kicks. And we know, again, like I said, within these competitions, teams sometimes come alive. Ball sent from the left-hand side of the West Ham half, right-footed into the box, arcing towards the penalty spot. Up went Eggstein to try and win the header. It's out of play towards the far side, recycled by Sebilia, uh, eventually smuggled away by Mavropanos, and then upfield by Kudos and it's cleared away 
through the middle by West Ham United. Ball bounces on this near touchline. Grifo heads it into the air. Bit of head tennis going on in the middle of the park. James Ward Prowse scrapping for the ball right on the edge of the centre circle. It goes back to the heart of the fence and Gulda and then across to Ginter. Ginter up high towards the right hand side. Sibilia comes forward once again. In it goes to Eggstein and then all the way back to the heart of the defence once more. West Ham's back-to-back wins in the Premier League just tempered the irritated sentiment that seems to cloak them constantly. Back up to seventh in the league. Moyes yesterday suggesting he believed that he thought his team were just about to return to where they should be. Yeah, it's difficult. It's interesting to know, you know, I've said it many times before, I think the disconnect between the fans. But I think West Ham right now, they're in a good place with regards to in the Europa League, sitting in seventh. I think if you asked a few West Ham fans a few years ago, if that was going to be a real- realistic expectation when the European chump, uh, trophy, and then to be in the Europa League and to be in seventh, you know, I think a lot of them would have bitten your hand off if you would have said that. But performance-wise, I think the fans just want a little bit more. I think they've got players. We're seeing six minutes into the game, Sam, you know, the work rate of James Ward-Prowse and Gerard Bowen. Every time the ball goes back, I question their work rate, obviously, against Arsenal and in those games, and I completely get it. Because losing is losing. We all hate losing, but it's how you lose. And it was embarrassing, those types of performances. But right now, seven minutes into the game, they look really organised and compact in those areas and, da- and dangerous. When they do get on the ball, maybe they could catch Freiburg on the counter. The Freiburg have dominated possession so far in the game 75% of it has been for them and they had a lion's share of the ball for two or three minutes before sending it into the far corner for Silvilia to chase he didn't quite reach it goes out for a throw and Emerson will toss it in from the left fullback position he finds Lucas Pakatar who holds off Silvilia tries to get uh, down the right side the ball goes out of play and it's a Freiburg throw West Ham weren't as convincing as the scoreline appears at the weekend they won that game at Everton because basically the Toffees can't finish and Ariola played an absolute blinder in that game. David Moyes won't be wanting to give up too many chances tonight. No, for sure. And Ariola's been fantastic, you know, at times when he's been called upon. It could have been way many goals, more goals leaking than they had. And I think, obviously, in this competition, we know Fabianski is that starting goalkeeper. I mean, Defence has been their Achilles heel, I think, over the course of the season. They concede far too many shots, West Ham United. They rank 19th in the league for shots faced at their own goal. And... Uh, I think if you look at the number of goals they've conceded at this stage of the season, it's more than any other Premier League season in which they've competed in, which I think will be a concern for David Moyes. That is something that they're going to have to plug if they want to uh, compete for sixth place, as they do, and in this trophy. Away to our right-hand side behind the goal, Freiburg. The support in white shirts, lots of them with white tops on over whatever it is they're wearing to ensure that they're visible behind that goal. They're bouncing in unison as they try to provide the soundtrack to what they hope will be a famous victory tonight. Nine minutes gone. Pakatar has it far side on the left. Cuts him towards the edge of the penalty area. Tries to play a reverse ball into Bowen. It's cut out on the edge by Ginter and then cleared out towards the far side. Eckstein leads the attack. Salai picks it up, turns, looks forward, sweeps it out towards the near touchline. Taken down by Gunter and then infield to Grifo. Grifo across into the middle and Herfler who holds in midfield just in front of the centre circle he is when he pushes it out wide Doan the Japanese international finds Salbilia and then once again West Ham get into that shape that you were talking about that keeps Freiburg at arm's length yeah it's difficult to break down and, and I give them that but I do think that West Ham at times need to get higher up the field of play I think you know Mavropanos and Kurt Zuma when the ball goes back to the goalkeepers we're seeing now I think then they've got to get a little bit higher at times it looks like if it's Jared Bowen up there he's isolated on his own and then James Walprouse it's like picking their moments and trying to set traps you know for them to beat the press but it's going to be difficult for this Freiburg team to break down this West Ham team but it's almost like they have to pick their moments of when they do so I think we'll go off to uh, find out what's happening with David Tanner in just a, a moment. Benfica playing Rangers tonight in the Europa League. We've also got Conti Cup action this evening with Manchester City taking on Chelsea, the winners of whom will face Arsenal. Ball sent wide towards the right as uh, Freiburg look at it. Collected by Silbilia, who's uh, had a lot of the ball so far in the game. He came through the academy uh, which uh, originally was headed up by Christian Strike. West Ham reached the semi finals in this competition in 2022. Those two games against Eintracht Frankfurt were rather disappointing. 
They won the Conference League in 2023. What a game that was. What a night that was in Prague. And they won another strong showing in Europe. Ball sent wide. Out towards Silbilia. Won by Edison Alvarez. Up to Pakitar, who feels he was felled by Silbilia. The referee says he wasn't. And they look to come on the attack here. Hurler sends it out far side. Silbilia's got it once again. Salah is moving up towards the edge of the area as Freiburg come forward West Ham back pedal and get into shape it's picked up on the right hand side by Salah who sends it to Silbilla Moller is waiting in the centre for the cross but Salah is well outside the penalty area here he's shuffled it back into Herfler now it's wide out to Grifo and then Ginter, uh, Gunter is dispossessed by Kudus and it's out for a throw in a good work right there from Kudus to get across but you can see it's quite pragmatic from Freiburg when they're getting the ball in those areas you know they have to find a way to get through West Ham I don't actually think that was a foul on Pakatar but at times you know he's picking up the ball so deep and he's isolated on his own he's a fantastic footballer we know that commentators curse as he gives away the ball <laughs> but you know he is very good on the ball but at times he's so isolated and I still think West Ham is sitting very deep you know they started the game with Bowen and James Warprouse kind of pressing from the front but right now that for me they're sitting too deep and inviting the pressure on Doan down the right hand side weaving his way to the left edge of the area tries to strike it's blocked by Edson Alvarez and it's repelled to the midway point of the Freiburg half but it's all Freiburg at this moment in time 81% possession of the football so far and uh, whether you're home or away or whether you're a big team or a small team 81% possession for your opponents is never attractive unless of course you nick an away goal here's David Tanner watching Benfica Rangers and it's Benfica nil, Rangers won, Sam. Rangers were battered for six minutes, then went up the park for the first time. A terrific cross from the left, cut back by Mohamed Diamandi. And there was Tom Lawrence with a terrific header from the penalty spot. Incredibly, it's Benfica nil, Rangers won. Arnos steps out for West Ham, nil nil in Germany. Kudus takes it on. Remember, Liverpool victorious tonight. Brighton absolutely pummeled away in Rome. And Aston Villa nil-nil in their game with Ajax in Amsterdam. The second leg's next week at the same time. Here on the left-hand side, Grifo has it. right footed cross into the box. Mavropanos reads it. Volleys it away from the dead centre of his own penalty area. Up towards Jared Bowen, who wriggles away from one challenge. And he looks at the referee and says, I'm pretty sure that uh, Goulder tugged me back there. And Alejandro Hernandez-Hernandez eventually blows his whistle and gives the free kick to the English side. And for me, that, that should be a booking. You know, it looked like Jared Bowen did really well to spin Goulder there. It was three player, 3v1, three and he had no right to really come away with the ball. But I think that's a booking, you know. They looked like they could have been away and potentially on a break. Yeah, it's on the halfway line, but it kind of stopped him in his motion. Yeah, well, that is the definition of uh, breaking up a promising attack, isn't it? That should have been a yellow card. 14 minutes gone, and it's Freiburg nil, West Ham United nil. Leanne Sanderson alongside me, Sam Adafes in the commentary box. We bring you live action from Germany tonight. And... Uh, West Ham United hoping to continue their good record in Europe over the last couple of years. Socek fighting to try and get hold of the ball with uh, Herfler. Herfler went down pretty softly after using his body to outmuscle Socek. Socek, as Socek went round the other side of him, he just seemed to throw himself to the ground. Yeah, I mean, Socek, as soon as you put your hands on another player, you know they don't need a second invitation to go down. It was soft, but he did pull his shirt. But with Suacek as well, I mean, we talk about strength and depth. You know, you look at this West Ham team and Calvin Phillips since he's come there. You know, I said I had no doubt that he would be great. And now he's on the bench and he hasn't really got off to a great start in his West Ham career. And obviously Alvarez and Suacek are playing in those positions that I expected at least Calvin Phillips to get a run of games, you know, and, and kind of cement that spot down. I'm sure that's what West Ham were thinking as well when they got him in. It's been fascinating over the last couple of weeks to watch because James Hall prowse has been playing alongside Alvarez. Then he's been switching with Socek. Socek's been playing as the number 10 recently that's why he's crashed in with so many goals in the last few few matches he's, he's, he's done brilliantly in terms of his goal scoring output but tonight it is Socek alongside Alvarez in the heart of that midfield as you say ball whipped in towards the near post by Freiburg who come on the attack 
Eggstein has it edge of the area, tries to nudge it back down the right to Salai, doesn't quite reach him, and it's cleared away out on the far side by West Ham. War Prowse scurries to the touchline under pressure from Doan, and then from the left fullback area, it's clipped forward by Emerson into the chest of Bowen, who quickly nudges it back to Pakatar. He then returns it to Bowen now, who's got four red shirts in front of him, not much help, but he runs down the left channel, waiting for those to arrive. Kudus is coming inside the penalty area, and Bowen shoots from a near impossible angle he hits the target but it's a very comfortable save by Noah Atabulo yeah I mean it was it, he had every right to take the shot on it was a, an acute angle from the left hand side but there wasn't really much on for him I think that's a bit of a concern for me every time the players are getting the ball they're quite isolated Jared Bowen in that area Pakatar when they're picking up the ball and I still think like a lot of teams in the English Premier League are lacking that out and out centre forward I still think obviously before certain players signed for West Ham Mikel Antonio there was a lot of focus on him being up there on his own and quite isolated whereas right now you know they've got excellent ball players on the ball but at times they're getting the ball and there's not really many options you know Kudos is tucking in on the right hand side doing a really gob good job organisationally on this right hand side but the attack they're quite isolated when they pick up the ball West Ham used to benefiting from set pieces themselves they'll be wary not to give away too many of Fry to Freiburg tonight their Italian international winger Vincenzo Grifo one of the best set piece takers in the Bundesliga for years he scored 11 goals and set up 9 across the Bundesliga and Europa League this season last year it was 17 goals and 6 assists so they'll be careful not to give away too many chances on the edge of the penalty area where they are defending now West Ham with so foul just overrunning the ball just a little bit he did well enough to keep hold of it into that right corner but then didn't release it forward quick enough and now from deep Edson Alvarez former Ajax player strides forward with it at his feet see that's the difference for me Sam between you know I know there's a big difference between Declan Rice and Alvarez but that's when I think you have to go back to front quicker Alvarez picks up the ball you know Super was coming inside looking for an option eventually Alvarez tucked in but then he plays the ball out to the left hand side to Emerson that's when the diagonal ball has to come you can see Pakatar made that run on the left and it was too slow eventually you know and it gives Freiburg an opportunity to kind of get back into position and they regain possession and it's all too slow for me nil nil live on TalkSport tonight on what has been a busy night of Europa League and Europa Conference League action Karabag 2 by Leverkusen 2 as West Ham commit a foul which gives them free kick Freiburg just in front of the halfway line Roma beat Brighton 4-0 Sparta Prague beaten at home by Liverpool by five goals to one it could have been more Rangers won in love against Benfica Marseille nil Villarreal nil AC Milan nil Slavia Prague nil and Freiburg nil West Ham United nil and that's our concentration tonight on Freiburg against West Ham for the third time this season Doan into Sibilia right side of the West Ham half they play it down the touchline a little flick off Emerson it goes out for a throw they take it quickly Eggstein plays it into the centre of midfield collected by Herfler who turns under a little bit of pressure from James Ward-Prowse they don't move the ball that quickly either Freiburg and uh, slow up before they reach the edge of the area a shot from distance from Eggstein is way over the top of the bar and it's a goal kick away to our left to West Ham United in the Conference League tonight Ajax drew 0-0 with Aston Villa in the early kickoff. and any other big results that come your way we will let you know both Leanne and I were quite surprised to see Maccabi Tel Aviv beat Olympiacos 4-1 in Preas tonight yeah that's crazy and this is what these competitions can do Sam with regards to you know the underdog we saw Karabag go 2-0 up against Leverkusen and Leverkusen then pull it back so this is what this competition can do with teams that are the underdog they've got nothing to lose you know teams like Freiburg ninth in the Bundesliga come into these type you can see the fans what it means to the fans to be in these types of competitions Kudus has it right side trying to steer it into the penalty area for West Ham he cuts in left footed arcs the ball towards the edge of the six yard box cleared away by Gunter and out towards this near side and Salai now will pick it up the Hungarian bounds forward at pace he's got Doan down the right hand side he tries to play a reverse ball into the centre a sort of inventive little flick which didn't quite come off and West Ham tidy up get the ball back and look to come forward with Edson Alvarez it's 0-0 20 minutes gone on TalkSport yeah Salai there could have made a better opportunity to play the ball out wide it was a good recovery from Suchek but I still think you know maybe this is where the West Ham fans do have a point because you look at the quality of the players they have Pakatar's now dropping all the way deep almost into the left back position he doesn't need to be there doesn't need to do that so I think a lot of the players need to be passed on because you've got Pakatar James Warprouse having to go so deep when Kurt Zuma and Mavropanos are there so they could have passed them on 
get the ball. You know, it's easier said than done into those defensive areas and then look for a quick switch because right now, yes, Freiburg have had all the possession. We don't have stats for nothing if they don't create opportunities. But West Ham are kind of very pedantic, very slow, not moving the ball back to front quick enough and then it gets turned over. Yeah, it looks like West Ham have come with a clear game plan to ensure that they come away with something tonight. And it is, as you say, a bit pedestrian so far. 21 gone, listening to Talk Sport. And for Freiburg, we've mentioned how the fans are really much buying into the situation here and getting involved with the atmosphere away to our right-hand side. It is a miracle that they are in the Europa League. If you think West Ham are European irregulars, maybe punching a little bit above their usual station. And it's worth knowing that Freiburg have never won a major trophy. And not so long ago, they dropped into the second tier of German football. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant for a team like Freiburg and you can see why the fans are so, you know, I think sometimes some clubs have to be a little bit realistic as to where they're at and I think sometimes, you mentioned it before Sam, with the teams, you know, with like some Brighton and West Ham, it's almost like fans have to have a realism as to where their club's at, but then again, when you're in these competitions, it's easier said than done. You know, when you're in it, you think we've got all these players that can be doing far better than they are individually and they don't. Ball sent wide, out towards the right for West Ham to try and come on the counter-attack. So foul has it, near side, plays it in to Bowen. Little flick to Kudus, Kudus edge of the area, left-footed. And he could have taken an extra touch, actually, driven into the box or tried to nudge it into the path of Pakataru, who moved into the 18-yard box. But he went for the Hollywood and he just completely shanked it and fired it way over the top of the crossbar. And it's been a long time since Mohamed Kudus uh, ended up finding the back of the net last goal was before Christmas against Manchester United yeah and I know obviously the West Ham fans when he went to the African Cup of Nations with Ghana they were going to miss him and his goals I think he's been brilliant since he went there I remember at the World Cup in Qatar Sam there was talks about him potentially going to Liverpool you know and I think he did well when he first got there but the goals have definitely dried up that was a bit erratic from him he, he should be doing better from there but it was a good little back heel from Bowen but it's good they're getting in those areas because like I said those types of players need to be up higher up the field of play Pakatos dropping so deep and I get it trying to pull strings but really it's ineffective if you're that deep you can't affect the other goal here come Freiburg right hand side Doan tried to squeeze it into the box but Pakatar blocked his effort to do so it comes back out to Herfler he feeds the ball to Eggstein and then it goes wide to Sibilia and his cross is met by Salai but it's well over the top and he was heading the ball from an impossible angle really it was almost sort of towards the back of his head and he flicked it up from a good 15, 16 yards away from goal always going to be difficult to trouble the goalkeeper from there and it went over the top and out for a goal kick away to our left so we played a quarter of the match and it's Freiburg nil, West Ham United nil, live on TalkSport tonight. And remember, tomorrow night championship action for you on TalkSport 2, Saturday. And we're in a run of 12 games in seven days of commentary on the TalkSport network. There's only 10 games to go in the championship. The EFL is certainly hotting up, there's no doubt about it. Leicester City, Southampton, Ipswich Town and Leeds United all fighting for automatic promotion places in the championship. I was at... Huddersfield against Leeds last Saturday and you could just see just a little bit of weariness creeping into Leeds United they will have to go again tomorrow night Sheffield Wednesday against Leeds is live on TalkSport 2 with 10 to go in the championship it's crazy to think that we're almost at the end of the season you know I feel like this season's gone so so quick but there's still a lot to play for a lot of football to play for and a lot of games coming quick and fast Sam and it's fantastic I mean obviously the Manchester derby last weekend as a Man United fan I was dreading it going into it and enduring it I thought actually this isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be you know on the show last Thursday I said I was dreading it and we were poor no doubt in that but that's where you've got now isn't it let's see you're happy with a 3-1 no I'm not happy <laughs> never will be happy with that but genuinely I thought it was going to be 5 or 6 before the game Manchester United form part of our commentary uh, instalment on Saturday 12.30 they take on Everton Everton who were beaten by West Ham but uh, not easily two 90th minute goals from David Moyes side sealed all three points it's goalless here with 24 gone this is Talk Sport Eggestein over on the far side Sibelia with a delivery into the box which should be gloved rather easily by backpedalling Fabianski who reaches his long arms into the sky brings it into his chest and will clear it away 
That's going to be something they see as a weakness for West Ham. They're getting quite a lot of joy down that run, right-hand side. But Salah is in this box on his own. You mentioned it. He had that shot, the header, sorry, that was like, you know, he's, that's not going anywhere, is it? He's heading the ball from like 20 yards out. It's not really going to work almost. So I think they're getting a lot of joy down the right-hand side. But I just want to see more from West Ham. Good interchange of play involving uh, Emerson and Pakitar. The two of them weave their way up the field but it breaks down with Bowen it's picked up by Salai who turns elegantly and feeds the ball out towards the left a chance to get the ball into the box by Gunter here he took a little bit too long to do so delayed it and by the time he'd done that so far had got across and blocked it yeah so far recovered really really well there you know that's one thing they've got in those areas the fullback but I think Gunter needs to release that ball a little bit quicker and that's maybe where Freiburg can catch West Ham out on the counter, you know, we talk about West Ham being pedestrian and those types of things. They look to try and release the ball forward, but again, it's still a bit sloppy from Socek. He played it too far in front of James Ward Prowse, who's going to have to try and stretch to, to meet it on the halfway line. Couldn't get there. It breaks down and goes straight back to a Freiburg red shirt. Yeah, I think both teams equally have turning over the ball in certain areas. They don't really look like there's much structure going forward when they do pick up the ball in those defensive areas and they're trying to they're not trying to really break the lines, the quality's breaking down. Both teams are being really patient. It almost at times it almost looks like a pre-season game because the tempo is so slow and they're turning over the ball in areas you don't expect. But then Jared Bowen's having to drop deep, set it back to Kudus as we just saw there, and then where's the next outlet? You know, then it goes back to Kurt. Zuma and then it goes forward and then it's slow you know it needs to be better I think it needs to be quicker second test uh, second day of the fifth test is available for you on TalkSport as England take on India at tomorrow morning 3.30am live on TalkSport 2 Erla sends it out to the right side Salai driving towards the edge of the box from the right angle of it he sort of scuffed at his shot which went dribbling through the 18 yard box and troubled no one and goes behind and away for a goal kick to West Ham United no one really has had a meaningful attempt on the other's goal up until this point, and we played uh, a good 27 minutes of it. Yeah, Salah looked like he got caught in two minds then. You could see Grifo was coming in on that left-hand side, and you could see what he was trying to do. It was almost like Salah got caught in two minds, whether he should cross it or shoot, and he just kind of P-rolled across the box. Well, Freiburg do spread the goals around. Only five players in this year's tournament have scored more times than Michael Gregoric, the Austrian is on the bench Vincenzo Grifo and Roland Salai all of whom have got four goals in the competition Gregoric is Freiburg's all-time top scorer in this uh, Europa League with seven goals he's available off the bench tonight here is Alvarez over halfway into Pakitar no coincidence I don't think Leanne that uh, since Pakitar has been back the performances have improved for West Ham yeah, he's a top player, I mean, with the ball at his feet. And I think it's unfortunate for teams like West Ham because it's inevitable, I think, he will eventually leave. And, and it's a shame because you look at players like Declan Rice, you know, give Declan his dues, he stayed there for as long as he could, and then he's moved on. Well, 1-2 on the edge of the box with Socek, almost came through, does come through to Bowen, who tries to return it from Kudos. It's a little bit uh, desperate from Freibo to get it away, and West Ham just putting a little bit of pressure on here. Ward Prowse on the right, Pakitar takes over, Sofal makes an inside channel run, he gets to the byline, the cross comes in, the ball went out of play, did it? It was flicked by Socek just in case, and eventually the assistant on this near side gives the goal kick. Freiburg nil, West Ham nil. Yeah, that was a difficult ball there for Pakitar to Sufal down the right-hand side, he sold it down the river a little bit there, by the time he got there, you know, the ball had overran, but I think, you know, again, those are the areas that you want to see Pakatar in, in those attacking areas, James Warprows. A lot of them, for me, they almost overwork, and that sounds crazy. I'd rather them do too much than what they did against Arsenal and kind of was out there completely pedestrian, but I think a lot of them, it's good they're interchangeable, but I almost feel like a lot of them are doing too much. Sometimes you have to stop still, receive the ball, and just play around in triangles. They're playing in triangles, but they're doing it, you know, in the defensive thirds, in the defensive zones. I think one the game settles later on we might see a little bit of movement of position here with uh, maybe uh, Kudus going out to the far side the left Boeing coming out to the right and Pakatar wandering into the centre and playing as the, the false nine we'll see what happens because I think he is more effective when he is playing in that position or in the centre where he can feed Bowen who's brilliant coming down the right hand side at the moment Bowen the point man half an hour gone Freiburg nil West Ham United nil West Ham decked head to toe in 
sort of dark royal blue tonight, which is a, a little bit uh, too Chelsea for uh, some of their fans, I think. It goes back towards the 18-yard box, and it's collected by their young goalkeeper, 21-year-old German, Noah Atabulu, who kick, clips clear up through the centre of the park. Zuma returns it with interest down the left. It's back with the Freiburg defence, and Matthias Ginter sends it forward. He picks it up now on halfway former German international scoops it into the path of Roland Salai he then helps it on and here's Ole and his effort is saved down the middle of the goal by Fabianski it was a good opportunity either side of the goalkeeper would have given the Polish international a test but it went straight at him from the edge of the box and now at the other end they've given the ball away cheaply to Kudus and Kudus now running towards the right angle of the penalty area he waits to come in on his left foot then chips it to the far post Bowen hits his effort into the ground and didn't connect with it at all well and it scoops over the bar and away to the right hand side of the post and out for a goal kick and Freiburg get a bit of a let off yeah you'd expect Jared Bowen in the form that he's in to do better there it was a fantastic nice little clip from Mohamed Kudus to that far post and it was just almost like Jared Bowen took his eye off the ball but better from better from West Ham they're lucky though Hilaire there almost put it in the back of the net himself down one end you know Fabianski by the time it got to him it was a bit of a P-roll but he didn't really catch it that well but you can see Freiburg are getting in behind they're possessing the ball but Jared Bowen I'd expect him to do a little bit better in that situation but better from West Ham Well that Bowen chance is probably the best of the game so far I think he just would have been better off had it fallen to his right foot rather than his left he sort of swiped at it a little bit and he hit it scuffed it into the ground it bobbled up over the top of the crossbar as it came over from Kudus but what a good move here on the right side Sibilia trying to get it into the box and uh, it's given away by Alvarez and Doan has picked it back up again edge of the area Socek comes across and covers and the ball bounces into the midpoint of the West Ham United half Hurler's effort from the edge of the box was uh, a little bit tame here's Doan inside the area trying to cross it towards the uh, the uh, centre of the penalty area but Socek comes across and headers the ball diving behind and puts it out for a corner that was a great third man run from Doan he gets into those areas by the time he decided to put it in the in the box there was not really got cut out and intercepted in the end but that shows you the third player run can cause West Ham a lot of problems I think Socek's doing a really good job being in the right place you know the ball's just hitting him they say if you're in the right place it will hit you positionally so he's doing a decent job here's the corner Grifo to take it dangerously towards the back post Salai can't reach it goes back in from Eggestein and it's way over the top of the crossbar and it's going to be out for a goal kick away to our left hand side so 33 minutes have been survived Rangers still lead by a goal to nil in Lisbon tonight after half an hour but it's nil-nil between Freiburg and West Ham United. Liverpool victorious earlier on. Uh, Aston Villa drew nil-nil. And Roma absolutely tonked Brighton 4-0. Jesus, this is an example, Sam, of where I think West Ham have to do better. They're possessing the ball, but it's so slow and they're causing their own problems. You know, there's times when James Warprouse he's dropping into the pocket and then he's gone backwards and then they've gone backwards and then Kurt Zuma ends up having to play you know a really poor ball back to Fabianski Doan running forward through the middle gets a second bite at it because he skips past the challenge of Mavropanos the referee says continue it looked like a foul Doan's actually not complaining too much he picked up the ball it ran loose and actually do you know what I think he dived to be fair that's an absolutely brilliant decision because I have my head in my hand Sam thinking that is a foul Mavropanos clipped him and then when you see the replay absolutely brilliant referee he should be booked Doan almost it's a dive for sure absolutely and the uh, Freiburg crowd certainly not uh, too happy about the suggestion that it was a dive see that's the problem though Sam with a lot of modern day footballers you know because I saw and I saw I thought it looked like a foul if you're at the game you're probably thinking it is a foul when it's your team you always think it is but that looked like he got clipped but he completely sold it yeah. it's a fantastic referee well, we're he's, often, he's too good at diving is that what you're saying yeah but we're often critical of these referees which I'm rightfully so but I think when they get it right you've got to give them credit as well absolutely here on the left hand side Grifo's got it again moving towards the edge of the area cutting it on his right foot trying to shoot the ball doesn't get any power behind it it's nudged away by Mavropanos bit of Freiburg pressure here as they come down the right hand side 10 minutes before the break 0-0 the score it's picked up by Doan and sent back into the path of uh, Hoffler Hoffler 
sends it wide to Doan once again and then it goes all the way back to Matthias Ginter and Freiburg are able to clear from deep inside their own territory well, there's a slip there Adson Alvarez wanted to capitalise on it the referee's blown the whistle now the Mexicans suggesting that there was no foul uh, Hertfler certainly not convinced he thought he was clipped yeah that is I mean there's not really much in it it took a while it seemed like it took an eternity for the referee to actually blow the whistle but again Alvarez coming out of that defensive role trying to put the pressure on the front to be fair you've got to give West Ham a lot of credit for their work rate within this game I think all the players you know they, they look organised but they're just not you know keeping possession of the ball enough for me Freiburg are having most of the possession it's very pedestrian both teams you're right Sam like you said earlier look like they've come here with a certain game plan in mind that they're going to you know they're not really putting a lot of purposeful passes together they're okay to have the ball but they're not penetrating through the middle they're not really you know moving in the final third with any type of conviction or speed of play no I think uh, both teams will be happy if it ends up going back all square to the London Stadium because Freiburg will believe that they can get something on the counter attack and West Ham will believe that they can with the onus and the support behind them take advantage of being at home next week that game will be live on TalkSport 5.45 next Thursday afternoon ball swept up by Mavropanos into the right fullback position he hammers it up towards the halfway line Bowen was going to try and ride that but uh, Gulda was there to head it clear the ball bounces in midfield and it's picked up by Eggestein all action moving forward from right to left towards the left side and he feeds the ball into Gunter Gunter's cross is big heavy way over the top of everybody inside the area and it goes out of play and away for a throw in the left fullback position and it remains goalless yeah as Gunter looks up into the sky he knows he overhit the ball wasn't the greatest of balls into those areas and you touched upon it earlier Sam with regards to the, both these teams being okay with it being a draw I, ne I never understand that because I think these games for West Ham are winnable for sure and it's not a foregone conclusion that when they go back to the London Stadium it's going to be oh you know West Ham look at Roma tonight versus Brighton you know these, ta these teams can beat these teams so for me if I'm a West Ham fan I'm thinking you know let's go in for this one let's at least try to win the game it's winnable they're on a decent run of late back to back wins Brentford and Everton so they, you know individually they've got good enough players Doan has it on the right of the West Ham penalty area feeds it into Grifo's ball round the corner almost reaches Eggestein there's a little bit of a scramble and Zuma has to hook it away from the onrushing Salai and it goes out of play and away for another corner to Freiburg 0-0 the score the Freiburg fans with a ripple of applause and a smile on their face as they know every time the ball goes up for a corner or a free kick they've got Grifo yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity. And again, you know, Zuma's at like sixes and sevens. I mean, it just takes one opportunity for them to put it in the back of the net. It's going to be Gunter, actually, who uh, sends this one in, left-footed. It's headed into the air, and it's a poor delivery and the concession of a goal kick. What a waste. It just it just blows my mind. I touched upon James Walprouse earlier, how fantastic his delivery is, but I just can't understand how a professional footballer, he's just hit it to the edge of the 18-yard box from a corner, Sam. Like, it just blows my mind. It literally hit the edge of the 18-yard box. You're talking 12 yards. Oh, dear. Kurt Zim has given the ball straight to Doan after the goal kick, but they won it back because Doan slipped. That was fortunate for West Ham. Seven minutes before we get to uh, half-time, and it's nil-nil between Freiburg and West Ham. Ball is out of play over on the far side. Left of the Freiburg half, right by the touchline. Pakatar picks it up, runs through the centre circle, needs a bit of help. A little back heel, he's getting tracked and pushed and pulled by Salai. Maybe in a position which you would deem too deep. Kudus gets the chance to run at Gunter now, down the right side. Almost bamboozled himself, then couldn't come infield. Ran into Eggestein, and then he manages to clear. Kudus wins it back again. Freiburg can't get it out of their own half at this moment in time. The thing with this formation from West Ham as well, I love it when players are interchangeable. I love that as a player when a coach gives you license to do that. But I just think it's unnecessary for players like you want to see Pakata up higher up the field of play. You don't want to see Suchek higher than him nine times out of ten. And I'm seeing that in this game. I understand as a player like Pakata, he wants to be on the ball all the time. But sometimes let Suchek do that. Let Alvarez do that. You get higher up the field of play with Bowen and James Warprouse. First yellow card of the game is going to go to Kilian Sildilia. 
And I think that was probably a tossing up process, really, because you remember early in the game you said that he should have been booked for a, a pulling back and a promising attack being broken down. That one on uh, Edson Alvarez has warranted a yellow card, and it is a free kick to West Ham United. Yeah, I think so. Really, it's accumulation of probably reckless challenges. But I think Alvarez did make the most of that one. I don't think players need to really roll six or seven times when they get clipped. And that's what he did. How many times did you used to roll? Never used to roll, Sam. Never used to roll? No. I had this ability to be able to... My teammates used to say to me, why do you always hold your head when you go down and get kicked in the ankle? It was a weird weird <laughs> habit of mine. It was almost like I'd go into like, you know, almost like a cocoon every yeah. time I went down. But yeah, I don't like all that type of stuff, you know. And, and I think in the women's game, I'm not just saying this, but, you know, get kicked, get straight back up. Genuinely, nine times out of ten. Bakatar in midfield gives the ball away won by uh, Vince Grifo the Italian Freiburg have possession deep inside their own territory we've got five minutes before the break on Talk Sport tonight and we've had goals galore in the other games apart from the Villa game but in the uh, games involving Brighton and the game involving uh, Liverpool earlier on today we haven't had any yet in Freiburg Alvarez good touch into Ward Prowse nice turn by Bowen weaves away from uh, Her Herfler plays it out towards the right side picks up Kudus Kudus now travels infield goes a little bit narrow probably needed to go further wide Bowen's made a dart down in towards the right channel produces a cross a little bit heavy over the head of James Ward Prowse and it'll float out on the far side and away for a throw but good quicker West Ham United move and the increase in tempo Leanne actually allowed them to get faster up into the penalty area and manipulate a few more spaces yeah fair play to Jerome Bowen he started that playoff on the halfway line and ends up playing a 1-2 and he gets on the end of it it wasn't the greatest of balls into the box in that situation he probably could have done a bit better Pakatar told him that as well but I think there's a lot of responsibility for these individual players because Jared Bowen is his best position really playing as a withdrawn number 9 I don't think so I don't think that's his best position Pakatar you know underneath him potentially is helping him out but the distances between the players you're asking a lot you know Jared Bowen's almost played a 1-2 and had to 40 yard dash it to be able to get on the end of that ball other players need to also share that responsibility because you're asking a lot of Jared Bowen Freiburg nil, West Ham nil. Here is Edson Alvarez, just right of the centre circle, strolling over the halfway line. Gives it to Bowen, gets it back again. Out towards the right side, and Sufau looked up, tried to see where he could chip the ball into, but Bowen, because he dropped deep, had vacated the space, and there was a big hole right in the centre of the West Ham attack. So he checked back and went to halfway, where Edson Alvarez has it. I wish I could clip that sound because that's exactly what I'm talking about. James Warprouse is making that run and for some reason Soufal just didn't fancy himself on the diagonal at all. And it was on. It was definitely on 100%, you know, nice little backspin on the ball, just put it in behind them and, you know, last minute just goes, goes sideways and then changes the attack completely. 43 gone. Herfler will take the free kick. Lots of uh, red and white in the Freiburg end away to our right-hand side. Visibly supporting their team tonight. They know that uh, this is not a, a side that uh, enjoy regular European competition. They did get to the last 16 last year. It's the first time they've ever played back-to-back -back European campaigns. They lost here to West Ham in their group stage, but they did win all of their three other home games in this season's competition, scoring 13 goals in victories over Serbian side TSA, Olympiakos and Lens in the playoff. They came from two goals down in that game to defeat them 3-2 in extra time and secure their progress from the knockout round playoffs. Here's Pakatar, over halfway, forward into Jared Bowen. Across comes Egerstein. Egerstein winning the ball back for uh, Freiburg and then Emerson gets in a tangle. Hurler brings it forward, out to Doan far side. Across goes Edson Alvarez, Doan goes on the run, down the right touchline. He tries to motor towards the edge of the penalty area. Alvarez is backed up by James Ward-Prowse. And then it goes back to Silbilia. 
who feeds the ball into Eggestein. Eggestein on the edge of the area. Out wide it goes into Doan. Doan with a chance to cross left-footed. He arcs it deep towards the far post. And he's looking for Grifo, who's just peeled off the defender. He's tried to win it back. Finds Gunter. Back into Grifo again, edge of the area. On the left now with a tightly packed West Ham team trying to funnel back and plug all the gaps. But it's picked up by Herfler. Out to a wide left. Gunter with a cross into the centre. Pull it away by Socek. And then Kudus brings it down. And then so foul with the ball out towards this near side and it's out for a West Ham United throw and the pressure is alleviated. Yeah, I mean, probably the best pattern of play that Freiburg have done in this first half. But then again, they go sideways, they're not going through the middle. But in the end, Gunter plays a really poor ball in. But again, good possession of the ball, just need to pick their moments. Well, that tells you a lot about the first half. There's not a single second of additional time that has been allocated by our Spanish referee. So far, West Ham's trip to the Black Forest has come with very few pitfalls but there haven't been too many benefits either. This is a result they would take, but I think they crave a little bit more the West Ham United supporters that have made the journey. Half-time at the Stadion am Vorswinkel. It's Freiburg nil, West Ham nil. Uh, Sam, thank you very much. Leanne Sanderson alongside him. But what have you made of that first half in terms of the approach from West Ham United? It feels like they've felt their way into the game without really getting going yeah I think you know both teams are turning over the ball pretty like a, a lot to be honest and I think I can understand where the West Ham fans are coming from at some times with the frustration because the individual players that they've got for me though Hugh they're working their socks off in areas they don't need to I think Pakata is dropping too deep Suacek needs to be in that area and Alvarez needs to be in those areas and James Warprouse is working so hard but again not really being able to affect in the final third because they're having to work so hard on the other side of the ball I completely get that because of obviously before the Brentford and the Everton game, they were leaking goals for fun. So you want to see the work rate from the players. Absolutely. But I think you're asking a lot of Jared Bowen. I said it just then. He's almost playing a one-two and having to make a 40-yard dash to get on the end of his own ball. You know, Packard is dropping deep. But I think Freiburg had that one opportunity with the head up. But other than that, haven't really caused many problems. Have had most of the possession. But I think with this West Ham team, I don't know why they don't, don't try and win the game. You know, yes, it's only half time, but I just think with the individual quality of the players they have in this team, you know, Kudus, Walprouse, Pakata, Bowen, they, they should be doing better, I think, when they're in the final third. But again, they look like they're running out of legs because they're having to work so hard on the other side of the ball. And I think Alvarez and Suacek need to get, you know, those players out of those areas because they become redundant if they're all in the same area, Hugh. Not many chances in the game as well for either side. Why do you think that was? Because I think both teams are being so patient and pedestrian with the ball that they're not really penetrating, picking moments of when they can go forward. You know, you're seeing it yourself, Hugh. They're, they're not really breaking between the lines. Doan's had a couple of opportunities down the right-hand side, but the quality just isn't there when they're putting the balls into the box. I thought the one chance when Kudus put it into Jared Bowen, Bowen, you'd, have to, you'd expect more from him in that situation. He's been good of late. I love Bowen. I think he's a top player, but I'd expect him to put that even though it's on his weaker foot in the back of the net. But other than that, I don't think either team has really caused many problems. I've said at times, it almost looks like a training game. You know, neither team really want to take that risk. And I hope in the second half, we'll start to see West Ham maybe, you know, possessing the ball in the final third a little bit more, putting balls into the box. Because other than that opportunity with Jared Bowen, I can't remember the, the times where West Ham are actually putting the balls into the box, You, Leanne, I'll be back with you very, very soon because Rangers had the lead at Benfica. But a penalty has just been awarded very harshly for me. Talk Sports, David Tanner. Yes, we're right on 45 minutes. It's been Fika nil, Rangers 1, but it is a penalty kick, a VAR decision, and the German referee is pointing to the spot. It was a corner kick, the eighth corner kick of the first half for the Portuguese. John Suter of Rangers headed the ball down. He had his arm up and he headed the ball onto his own arm. I think he makes himself bigger. So in today's rules, it is a penalty kick and it will be taken by the former Manchester United World Cup winner Angel De Maria he's stepping up at the moment he's been involved in nine goals in the Europa League at home so far there's a pause in play as Jack Butland is being booked by the referee for gamesmanship Angel De Maria who spent much of the game involved in that kind of thing himself will now get the chance to bring Benfica level in the Estadio de Luz in a torrential rain. De Maria chips and scores. So it's Benfica 1, Rangers 1 after two minutes of five added on in first half stoppage time. 1-1.
Rangers, though, putting in the kind of show and that is uh, familiar for them so far in European competition, battling throughout the evening and deservedly in the lead. But Benfica have come right back into it and maybe they will push on after Di Maria's equaliser. David Tanner, thank you very much. Uh, I'll update you on the rest of Europe very shortly, but let's go to the Conti Cup semi-final. Chelsea started very well against Manchester City's women. Have they pushed on? Jeff Peters. Well, it is still Manchester City nil, Chelsea won that early goal from Lauren James inside eight minutes. But in this second half, Manchester City have been so much better. They've come really close to an equaliser. Lauren Hemp uh, from close range. What a save from Hannah Hampton. She's having a great second half in the Chelsea goal. It was an outstanding stop from Hemp after Jess Park had played in the cross from the right-hand side. Bunny Shaw's had a couple of efforts. Hampton has kept both of those out as well. Just can't find that killer touch in front of goal. Hampton's having a fantastic evening. And Lauren James's goal at the moment is looking like Chelsea are going to face Arsenal in the Conti Cup final. Still got 15 minutes of normal time remaining. It's Manchester City nil, Chelsea 1. Jeff, thank you very much. So let me bring you up to date with the half-time scores in the Europa League this evening. AC Milan leads Slavia Prague by three goals to one. The former Arsenal and Chelsea frontman Olivier Giroud with the opener. That's after El Hadji Diouf was sent off. A different El Hadji Diouf. Same temperament, though, clearly. Uh, Dudera then volleyed in an equaliser for Prague before Tiny Rinders uh, and Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Two goals in two minutes put them 3-1 up on the stroke of half-time. Uh, Marseille leaf Villarreal by three goals to nil. It's kind of a Premier League flavour this evening in Europe. Jordan Fair to the former Villa midfielder and own a goal from the Wolves' loanee, Yerson Mosquera, and another former Chelsea and Arsenal striker with the third, Pierre Emmerich Abamyang. Elsewhere in the conference league, uh, Dinamo Zagreb 1, PAOK 0, uh, Maccabi Haifa 1, Fiorentina 1. It's goalless between Servette and Victoria Pilsen and Union Zangil Waz, a trailing Fenerbahce at home by a goal to nil. All right, let's get half time odds next with Labrooks. Odds update on Talk Sport with Ladbrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambler.org. So at the break here on Talk Sport, no goals as yet between Freiburg and West Ham for the Germans to go on and win the game. It's currently 11 to 5. The draw is 5 to 4. And for West Ham to win it, it is 9 to 4. Those are the latest odds with Labrooks. It's 18 plus be gambler.org. Odds update on Talk Sport with Ladbrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambler.org. Well, with 20 seconds of time added on out in Portugal, there's been another goal. David Tanner. Incredibly, it's Benfica 1, Rangers 2. Dujon Sterling has scored. It was a free kick from wide left. The Ukraine international goalkeeper dropped uh, the ball. He parried it. It came back out and it was a terrific cross from the right, from the left, I beg your pardon, by the Portuguese player, the former Benfica player in Rangers ranks, uh, who smashed the ball into the path of Dujon Serling at the back post and he side-footed it into the back of the net. But Silva was the man who got the ball into the six-yard box and Sterling was there unmarked at the back post. So Rangers... Uh, were level for much of the first half then there was that stoppage time equaliser from Angel De Maria from the penalty spot and suddenly Rangers find themselves in front Mm. with six minutes of first half stoppage time this goal is being checked it's being checked David because Cyril Dessers was definitely in the eye line of the goalkeeper when the cross came in and I'm not sure if he interferes with the goalkeeper, but the ball because the ball doesn't go to him. He, he certainly doesn't touch it. It goes beyond him and to the back post. But you have the feeling it's one of those nights in European competition that Rangers will have to have everything go their way. The goal's been checked, and I think it has been given. Yes, OK, David Tanner, thank you very much. Rangers leading two goals to one at Benfica. Another one of those special away performances for Rangers in Europe. Not yet... A special performance for David Moyes and West Ham United against Freiburg. At the break, live on TalkSport, it is Freiburg nil, West Ham nil, the second half to come. Kickoff on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. 
Six Nations and six amazing chances to win an unforgettable adventure for you and five mates in a Six Nations European host city of your choice. To take part, enter online now at greenking.co.uk slash rugby. Six Nations, six mates and six international rugby getaways worth £3,000. Scrum down and sign up to win at greenking.co.uk slash rugby and watch all the Six Nations action live at your local Green King pub. Terms and conditions apply 18 plus drinkaware.co.uk. Here they are, the racing lovers of the UK, phone in hand, ready to play the Coral Reward Shaker. Look at them shake. We've got the regulars at the race course shaking their phone with confidence. And look, they've won a free bet. Parents on a day out just happy to be here. They've done it too. An odds booster for them. Lovely stuff. Everyone's a winner. Play Coral's free reward shaker this Cheltenham to win guaranteed daily rewards and offers. Coral, we're here for it. 18 plus UK. Max one reward or offer per player per day. Reward restrictions, requirements and T's and C's apply. Take time to think. I'm Mike Brewer and I don't know a lot about music. Garage, that's where I keep my car. But if you want to keep that in tune, visit mymotorworld.com We've got the lot, everything you need, including car parts and oils from the biggest brands like Quinton Hazel, Brembo, Denso, Castrol and Carlu. Plus free delivery when you spend over 25 quid. Order now at mymotorworld.com and quote car 10 to receive a 10% discount on your first order. Mymotorworld.com We're Bet MGM Sports and Casino. We know things aren't always golden. That's why we offer you the tools to keep your place safe. Set timeouts to always ensure you take a break when you feel like you need it. Set reality checks so you know exactly how long you've been playing. And set deposit limits to help control what you spend. Stay golden with BetMGM. Play responsibly. 18 plus. Nothing beats a Jet 2 holiday. And right now, you can save up to £120 per couple. So, escape to sunny favourites like Greece, Portugal and Italy and get 22 kilograms of baggage included. Book now with just a £60 deposit per person. Jet 2 Holidays, package holidays you can trust. Up to National Protected, subject to availability and conditions. OK, so I've changed your brake pads, I've replaced a wiper blade and topped up your screen wash. Anything else you wanted me to look at? Yeah, my washer-dryer only works on a short cycle. I've got it in the boot. Like getting your money's worth? Grab a McDonald's save a meal deal. That's a cheeseburger or a mayo chicken, medium fries and drink for just 3 99 <whistles> From 11am, not available on delivery. Who are you backing in the next race? The favourite. Using the free bet I've got in the Bet UK app. What? The favourite? You're joking. I could beat him running backwards. As if, mate. I've seen you run, it's embarrassing. You're embarrassing. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, mate. Whatever you think this Cheltenham, visit betuk.com to claim your £30 in free bets when you bet £10. Bet UK, it's where the UK bets. New customers only, £10 minimum bet. Minimum odds and T and C supply, 18 plus, please gamble responsibly. Turbocharge your Saturday with Game Day. It's the ultimate heavy hitting Premier League experience. Exclusive rights to two massive Saturday games. Manchester United versus Everton. Kickoff 12.30. On Talksport. What a goal! Followed by Wolverhampton Wanderers versus Fulham. Kickoff 3 pm. On Talksport 2. It's in! Supersize your Saturday. Game day. This Saturday. On Talksport and Talksport 2. The passion, the pain. And the poetry of the beautiful game. Overhead kick! Brilliant goal! The Europa League live on Talk Sport. At the break here on Talk Sport, Freiburg nil, West Ham nil in the last 16 of the Europa League. Earlier on in the competition on Talk Sport 2, we brought you Sparta Prague 1, Liverpool 5. Mo Salah returning from injury late on. Ibrahima Kanate went off injured in the first half. The Sunday session will come live from Anfield this weekend as Liverpool hosts Manchester City in a huge game in the Premier League. Also in the Europa League, by the way, Brighton are all but out after they were beaten 4-0 at Roma. At Leverkusen came from two down to draw at Carabag and earlier in the Europa Conference League, Esri Conta sent off as Aston Villa were held to a goalless draw at Ajax who also had a man dismissed and there were wins for Lille, Maccabi Tel Aviv 
and Mulder. And at halftime in Rugby League Super League this evening, it is Hull KR 12, Warrington 18. Uh, the latest episode of Outspoken with White and Jordan's available at the moment. Uh, the podcast here every weekday to give you the very best of their award-winning show in one bite-sized chunk on the latest episode, Jim and Simon, uh, discussing whether Manchester City are actually the best team in Europe. The phones uh, lit up for that conversation after Simon's view on Manchester City's ownership model. They also spoke about Trent Alexander-Arnold's comments that Liverpool's success means more to their fans than Manchester City's. That's Outspoken with White and Jordan, available to download from wherever you get your podcast from. Subscribe now so you don't miss a thing. So, uh, at halftime, as I say, goalless between Freiburg and West Ham United. The home side actually had 62% possession in that first half. Had eight shots, but only one on target. West Ham, uh, just three shots in that opening half. One on target as well. No real clear-cut uh, chances. Maybe Mohamed Kudus and Jared Bowen could have done better with little half chances in that half but um, they will have to improve if they're going to win the match this evening let's quickly look ahead with Leanne Sanderson how do you think David Moyes uh, would have addressed his side at half time yeah I mean I think both teams have come for a draw if I'm being honest we said it during the commentary but I think individually West Ham I think they need to get higher up the field of play I think they're sitting too deep I think the change, the players have been interchangeable which is great but I want to see Pakatar, Gerard Bowen Ward Prowse being able to kind of use their energy in those final third areas with Alvarez and Suacek kind of sitting a little bit more you know I think there's too much responsibility and the players are kind of running around at time at times, you know, wasted unnecessary energy. Yeah, you want the players to work hard, but unnecessarily, I don't think you want that. So I think West Ham could win this game pretty comfortably. I'm not sure why they wouldn't go out there to try and win the game. Maybe that's where the frustration for the West Ham fans is going. It doesn't look like that right now. I remember, of course, West Ham United did play Freiburg in the group stage, won both of those games, and were probably favourites to do the same again tonight. 45 minutes and a little bit of improvement, and I reckon they could get themselves over the line. Uh, let's get into the action then. The second half just about to get underway in the company of the former Lioness, Leanne Sanderson, and TalkSport, Sam Matterface. Yes, Sam Freiburg, a small but splendid-looking city close to the Swiss and French borders. Very much... Uh liked by Leanne because it produces uh, a fine German wine it is the wine growing region actually of uh, Germany is uh, Freiburg Weingart Stiegler Schenin Blanc Trucken is uh, one of your favourites isn't it? Oh, I wonder why you asked me that at half time I thought you were going to bring me a glass but clearly it's for you <laughs> to mention it on your commentary <laughs> uh, yeah and the West Ham fans who uh, number 2,230 uh, certainly have sampled a few of the local glasses I think during the course of the day uh, no changes at half time for either of these two teams yellow card for Tildilia in the first half the only disciplinary action that has been taken so it is Atabulu in goal Sildilia right back Ginter, Gulda and Gunter across the back four Herfler is the holding midfield player with Doan, Egestein uh, Hall, Erler and Grifo behind Salai in attack. West Ham with their usual formation. I'll run through the 11 in just a second, but they're in blue shirts, blue shorts and blue socks and they're on the attack, attacking the ball, the goal away to our left-hand side. And uh, Freiburg defending with red and white shirts, red shorts and socks. Kudas jinking his way into the area. Left footed, drives it towards the near post. It was good feet by him and a first real tester for the goalkeeper, Atabulu. Yeah, I love that for Mohamed Kudus, does so well. Drops left, drops the shoulder, touch inside, really underwhelming strike in the end, but that's exactly what you want to see from Mohamed Kudus, getting into those areas, comfortable save from the keeper, but I like the drop of the shoulder to create the opportunity. Yep, Bowen had a decent effort in the first half, but he didn't quite catch after Kudus did some good work, and then Kudus' effort there, probably the two best chances that... Uh, West Ham have had. Freiburg come up the other end, down the right with the blonde haired Doan, the Japanese international, centralises the ball. Herfler will float it to the right side and uh, with braids, Sedilia moves up towards the edge of the area, gets the return pass from Doan and uh, he should have let that go across his body and then he sends the ball into the centre, the flying kick from Salai, it's blocked by Socek and it pops the other side. It was a great effort actually and uh, Sedilia did well to dig the cross out left footed into the box and Salai did a flying volley going backwards I'm not sure what it would have been on target but Socek made sure that it didn't reach that far yeah you can see Salai set up for him to do that overhead kick really well it looked like Fabianski potentially would have had it covered but again you know West Ham create an opportunity down one end Freiburg both teams seem quite open 
when they're on the attack just a little bit more quality I think is needed when they're in certain areas and a whatsapp from someone who says the 2018 grape is very good oh, I'll have to check that check one out, out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Berg Neil West Ham United Neil I'm a bit more of a spat bugunda for myself I don't know what that is but carry on <laughs> <laughs> nice German red wine Alejandro Hernandez Hernandez just calming things down after a bit of a spat in the middle of the park. And uh, it's a free kick to uh, Freiburg on this right hand side. Across comes Grifo to try and call some Grifo. A little bit of collision off the ball involving Pakatar and Salai. The referee quick to award the free kick as they attack the goal away to our right hand side. It's quite a dangerous position in this situation. We know Grifo's really good at set pieces, but a ball in between a penalty spot and the 18 yard box could be really dangerous. Gunter just giving Grifo some instructions. He'll hit this right footed arc it in behind the defensive line, which is about five yards inside the box. West Ham defending here. The ball deep towards the far post. Salai trying to get there, was muscled out of it by Sofal. Referee said nothing doing. The ball goes out of play and away for a goal kick. It was a brilliant ball into the box. To be fair, Salai, we saw him in the first half. Oh, and he's been booked, but screaming in the face of Alejandro Hernandez Hernandez, Roland Salai. I think he would have been offside anyway. Yeah, but, you know, he's a strong guy. I don't think he needs to go down in that situation. Sufal doesn't really do anything at all, and I think, obviously, the referee, I don't know why he's so animated, and he, he's not going to get a penalty for that, Sam. But I think he thinks that Sofal headed it out and it was going away for the corner, but what he hasn't realised is is that the offside play's gone up and there's going to be a free kick to West Ham United. Ball's run out of play on this near side, and Freiburg trying to keep it in. They might have successfully done that with... Hurler on this right side it drops on the edge of the box Hurfler sends it forward to the edge of the D and it's dropping once again and allowed to bounce far too much Grifo gets a little bit of uh, extra pressure from Sofal it runs to the far side Sofal puts it out it's a throw in to Freiburg 0-0 the score I mean the quality of that type of pass in there from both teams like a pinball machine the ball was in the air you know 5-6 passes the quality just it's not, it's not been a great quality game, Sam, if I'm being honest. But I think someone needs to take the ball, settle it down, create the opportunity. We saw Kudos got in there in the first minute of this second half. Easier said than done, but that's the area you want to see those types of players in. West Ham have challenged themselves to return to European competition for a fourth year. That can only be guaranteed if they get a top seven finish or victory in this competition. They won the... Europa Conference League last term their first major trophy since 1980 they're just two points off the top six in the Premier League Moyes has had his hand been strengthened by recent returns of Bakatar in particular and Kudus from international duty I don't think it's any coincidence that their performances have improved here's Kudus who certainly does that too accelerates down the right side Bowen with a cross into the box Bakatar is unmarked and he was just put under enough pressure from Doan that the ball was scooted off his toe and it goes behind for a corner kick. Best opportunity for West Ham in the second half. Lovely cross from the right from Bowen where he usually does so much damage. And Doan, absolutely superb defending to get back and stop Pakatar just as he was about to pull the trigger on the edge of the six-yard box. Nil-nil, corner. Yeah, that was great defending from Doan. You could see Pakatar was about to put it in the back of the net. Lovely stand-up ball from Gerard Bowen to the far post. Great defending from Doan. Well, Freiburg have struggled defensively recently, but a lot of that is down to injuries. They've leaked 20 goals in their last nine games. West Ham haven't pierced them yet. Here is the right-footed corner by Ward Prowse. Deep to the far post. He's headed down. He hits the full of the post. Mavropanos. What a chance. Brilliant deep delivery to the far edge of the six-yard box. Mavropanos came in behind the goalkeeper and hit the foot of the post. When I first saw it, I was thinking I need to see this one again because it looks like he probably should have done better in that situation, but I'm not going to make excuses for him, but the ball was quite close to him by the time it landed. He was about two, you know, a yard or two away from the post. So it wasn't as easy as it looked in that situation, Sam. But again, fantastic delivery from James Walprouse. And when you have those types of players in your team, it's a joy as a centre forward. When you know the ball is going to come into those danger areas, you know, it's a real good position to be in for West Ham when they've got a player like James Ward-Prowse and the, way that he, the ability that he has on the ball. Ward-Prowse again trying to get in front of uh, Eggerstein. 
he plays the ball up to the edge of the box and it's played in by uh, Kudus who lost it won it back again he's got it back again after fighting for it inside the area right for his shot blocked by it Eggerstein comes back to Sofau he cracks it across the floor but it's well wide of the right hand upright and dribbles behind and away for a goal kick eight minutes gone in the second half and West Ham have certainly shown more attacking teeth in the opening eight minutes than they probably did in the first 45. Yeah, they have. And again, too foul on the edge of the box there. Probably should do better. Just snatches at it. But again, I said it in the first half, Sam. We're seeing these players now get into that final third area. That's exactly where you want to see Kudus. He's had a couple of really good runs in the second half. Really causing a problem to that back line. 53 gone. Talk sport. Live. In the Europa League tonight, Rangers in front in Lisbon. They went 1-0 up, got pegged back, then scored again in the last few minutes of added time at the end of the first half in the Stadium of Light, the Estadio de Luz, as it's called, in uh, Lisbon tonight. And victories for uh, Roma and Liverpool earlier in the games involving English clubs. Villa drew 0-0. Here on the right-hand side, it's a poor delivery into the box by right-back Kylian Sildilia and a bit of a waste of a Freiburg attack and it remains goalless. Yeah, that's a poor ball from Sildilia in that situation. He knows it is himself, he doesn't need me to tell him, but on that right-hand side, you know, a good delivery into the box could cause a lot of problems. But I think it's definitely been better in the first 10 minutes of the second half from West Ham, getting into good positions, getting into good areas. It'll be interesting to see, you know, David Moyes maybe might start to make a couple of changes bringing players off the bench maybe Calvin Phillips being that pivot player that could come off the bench you know to make some passes that can maybe you know penetrate them going forward because right now it's been better from West Ham but we've not seen Jared Byron really touch the ball and it's difficult when you're up front on your own in those situations I've done it myself Sam it's so hard because you're feeding off scraps at times you know you're having to chase everything down it's a really selfless role we saw Mikel Antonio do it for so many years for West Ham and after the games remember in his post-game interviews he could barely catch his breath because he was absolutely shattered yeah well uh, he is on the bench tonight available for West Ham United you mentioned Phillips Johnson Cresswell Ings on Bonner all available for selection off the bench if required by David Moyes here is Doan switching the play towards the left hand side as Freiburg come on the attack Griefer with an effort from well outside of the usual shooting range and he goes beyond the goal and away for a goal kick away to our right uh, full time in the Conti Cup City against Chelsea the winners are going to take on Arsenal so who is it that provides the Gunners opposition in the final Jeff Peters well, it'll be Chelsea who face Arsenal in the final at Molyneux later this month. They beat Man City with an early strike from Lauren James, her 15th goal for club and country this season. Hannah Hampton made some crucial second-half saves as City pushed for that equaliser. It didn't come. There was one outstanding close-range stop to deny Lauren Hemp. Full-time Man City nil, Chelsea won. LJ on target again. And uh, Manchester City part of our commentary this weekend big game on Sunday for you to follow yeah I'll be doing that game at Leighton Orient Tottenham quarter final you know it'll be really good against Manchester City it'll be interesting to see this season you know Emma Hayes a lot of talk has been about her becoming the manager of the US Women's National Team you know she lost in the league to City a couple of weeks ago but now they've beaten them tonight and they're into another final yep and uh what are you going to do with your mum Mother's Day now? Because you forgot that it was Mother's Day, didn't you? <laughs> no, I didn't forget it was Mother's Day. I forgot that I was working. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for throwing me under the bus there, Sam. <laughs> I haven't told her yet. But she'll come to the game with me. <laughs> I thought we were friends. <laughs> yeah, just, just, you know, just get her some flowers from the, the, the petrol station on the way back from the game. You'll be fine. No. Yeah. Uh, you see, you should have, should have organised it earlier. Oh, Mother's Day. You've got to, got to be prepared, you know. I'm taking my mum to Dancing on Ice. Do you do that, dear? Do you do that to the nice? <laughs> 57 gone. Uh, Freiburg nil. West Ham United nil. And uh, West Ham United had a couple of good chances at the start of the second half, but nothing more than that to show for their trip to Germany so far. Although I think if it was to remain like this, they'd be satisfied. Not pleased, satisfied, I think. This is Socek. Nudges the ball to the right as West Ham regain possession once again. I think they'll only be satisfied because I think if you, if they did put their foot to the, the floor a little bit, Freiburg are there for the taking, aren't they? I think that's where the frustration comes from with the West Ham fans. And a few of them have tweeted me during the game, you know, and I looked at them at my half time and I'm like, I get where they're coming from to a certain degree. You know, I don't think it's all David Moyes' fault. I think 
you know, sometimes as a player you have to take responsibility well, as well. Could be in trouble here, yellow card coming out for him for diving in on a tackle on Doen on the near side. It was a bit unnecessary really because the ball was you know, near the halfway line, right side to the touchline. He's gone steaming in on uh, Doan and he's gone, well he's landed, his left foot has landed on top of Doan's foot. So it's a late challenge, it's your yellow card. Yeah, un un completely unnecessary really. I'm all for players, you know, trying to get stuck in. We saw one previously about 10 minutes ago when he did the same thing. He gave away that free kick on the right hand side and, you know, Grifo put it into the box. Maybe there's a little bit of frustration, you know, creeping in because we can see Pakatar's, you know, his footballing ability is on a different level. And I think West Ham fans can see that. He brings that flair that he has within this team but he will get frustrated because I don't think the players can match his ability that are around him David Moyes is asking for clarification from the fourth official as play continues and Freiburg look to try and eke their way up the pitch away to our right the ball is picked up by Grifo who cracks it from 30 yards out I mean it would have to be some effort it wasn't it went about 20 yards over the bar and into the Freiburg fans away to our right hand side I mean I'm not trying to be overly harsh but I think as a professional footballer you know how you strike the ball the position of your foot those types of things make a difference and Grifo has just completely you know pummeled the ball Sam about 40 yards over you know other options mistakes will happen I get that but I never understand because you know as a footballer the techniques you use that there's only one way that ball is going and that's way over you can see it we're hitting the hour mark and we're awaiting our first goal. We've got two balls on the pitch at this moment in time, so we'll have an uncontested drop ball. But it will go back to the team in possession. We do like an uncontested drop ball now, don't we? There's certainly controversy surrounding it anyway. Ball played out towards the right side for uh, Freiburg. And uh, Sildilia actually has found a beautiful ball down the right for Olea. And... Uh, Hurler has tried to send it in towards the near post, blocked by Kurt Zuma, and it goes behind in the way for a corner, and Hurler's effort was actually enhanced by that ball down the right side by Sildilia, showing his quality. Yeah, that was a great ball from Sildilia down that right-hand side, nice intricate ball in behind. You can see Kurt Zuma had to come across, almost got dragged out of position, and deals with it pretty comfortably in the end. 0-0, corner, Grifo to take it right footed arcs it towards the near post it's headed away by Socek comes out to Sildilia he sent it a little bit too far out to the right for Gunter who's managed to keep hold of it and play a 1-2 with Grifo they'll lose it on the edge of the box though and Pakatar will find Bowen who clip it forward Kudus goes on the charge trying to run after it and he's putting pressure on Sildilia here and he does well enough to hold off the Ghanaian and guide it back into uh, Gulda back with Atabulu away to our left hand side that was a perfect example Sam in that situation where Pakata's all the way back there having to set the ball if I'm Alvarez or Suchek I'm like get out of this area you do not want you know you're attacking players in those areas because they don't need to be there that's where they have to be more commanding in those areas get him out of there get him higher up the field of play to be able to affect the opposition's goal Gunter helps it into the path of Egerstein uh, it's picked up by Pakatar who tries to release Jared Bowen on the halfway line now turns and up faces up the Freiburg defence he's got Kudus to his right he scampers forward now on the edge of the penalty area a ball to the back post Pakatar's header is over the bar it was just a little bit too high for him it was going to be difficult for him to try and keep it down and he couldn't do so but it was a racing West Ham United attack they went down that right side fed by Bowen Kudus went scampering to the edge of the box, the left-footed ball into the edge of the six-yard area, aimed at Pakatar, was a good one, but it had the height to get over Silbilia, and because it did get over Silbilia, it also was just a little bit difficult to control for Pakatar. Yeah, I, I think you're being overly nice to him there, Sam. I'd expect him to do a bit better there. I think with Kudus as well, that ball, it was similar to the one he put to Bowen in the first half. Lovely little flip ball into that area. I get what you're saying completely, but I think a player of his quality, I almost feel like he jumps too high. 
you know, too soon, sorry, before the ball's come. The ball, by the time it got to him, it almost hit him at waist height. He could have, where he could have potentially have controlled. You could see kind of the grimace on David Moyes' face because I think it wasn't an easy chance, but I think he should do better in that situation. Do you think he was slightly blindsided by the fact that Sildilla was standing in front of him and it just came over Sildilla at the last moment? Yeah, it wasn't an easy chance at all. I completely get that. And maybe you've got a point there. I just think a player of his quality, you just expect him to do a little bit better in that area. But fantastic ball from Kudus again. He's got that, you know, that clip ball that yeah. over bypasses the Superb, back line. Superb, isn't it? It's brilliant. And I think, like, it's something that's really underrated because he makes it look easy. But not many players now, you see a lot of the balls getting cut out when players are not overhitting the pass. Whereas that's a gift, you know, the same with Jared Bowen in the first half. I think the Bowen chance was easier than that one. Nil-nil. Freiburg and West Ham United toiling a little bit tonight. A few chances, but uh, not the most fluent performance of the season for David Moyes' team. But I think David Moyes will be satisfied with the defensive shape of the team that has considered a lot of goals this season. Doan going down the right, trying to cut in field, releases the ball into the centre. Grifo, who's come off that touchline. Hurler, back out to the right from Eggestein. And then into the nose, the near post, and it's headed into the air by Wall Prowse, and then further clear. But Sildilia's got it back again, only before Pagatar can rob him, and then stride forward with purpose. Release Kudus, it just went across his body, but he keeps hold of the ball well. Now Bowen joins the attack. He's on the right side for West Ham United. Gets up to the perimeter of the penalty, and cuts in left footy, and curls the ball towards the far post, and it's narrowly wide. And I wonder whether or not the goalkeeper, Atubulu, managed to get something on that because that was a typical attempted finish by Jared Bowen and Atabulu just got his fingertips to it I think yeah that was a great save from Atabulu absolutely brilliant fingertips Jared Bowen probably thought he had scored he cuts inside does really well Jared Bowen that's a fantastic save because that was going in all day long it was a really good save we've seen it on the monitors now that was a terrific stop by the German goalkeeper and you can see by the way he celebrated it just how important he felt it was Jared Bowen getting into that right wing position he's just moved out there in the second half I thought that might happen at some point Leanne yeah you did say that didn't you in the first half and cut in on that left foot and caused a bit of an issue ball delivered to the back post it's over Mavropanos's head this time and there was a collision in the box the referee wasn't happy with anyway and it's going to be a goal kick away to our left 65 gone 0-0 zero, zero. Yeah, it's an interesting one because we know the delivery that James Warprouse has. I don't actually think that's a foul, if I'm being honest. Mavro Panos, he goes down, you know, he just com competes for the ball. But I think the West Ham players need to anticipate, you know, someone needs to go on the, the back post when he is putting those balls into those areas. Ball cleared up over the halfway line by Freiburg. Salai putting pressure on Kurt Zuma. West Ham season doesn't depend on this competition, but it does provide solitude from the intense glare of the Premier League. 12 Premier League wins this season is the same as Newcastle United. Nine defeats is fewer than Manchester United. And they've only scored once more goals at this stage of that competition. But they have a problem here, and Emerson is down in the left fullback position and needs attention. You had to throw that in there about Manchester United, just had to, didn't you? I'll just give I was in context. a good mood. I, I appreciate you, Sam. Not. Um, I think, you know, it's interesting with West Ham because for a team to go almost two months, Sam, without winning a game, that's where I think the frustration comes from. And then to still be at that point, they're in eighth position in the Premier League is kind of unheard of. To go on that losing run like they did and to still be high up the, up the table is quite, maybe it's a, it's flattering to them at this moment in time because I know the fans are frustrated and I kind of get their frustration because it's nights like tonight where you think about the individual players and they, if you look at the team sheet, you know, all day long, look at that four players I mentioned in the first half. Pakatel Kudus, you know, Bowen, Ward-Prowse, top quality players. But right now, it just looks like they're a little bit flat. Second half, I think, has been better for West Ham. Emerson's going to have to come off here, which is not great news for David Moyes. He's been quietly very good this year, has Emerson in that left fullback position. Uh, tomorrow morning, Ray Parler is alongside Alan Brazil on the Superstar Breakfast from 6 o'clock. Usual service for your Friday morning and warm up to the weekend. We've got Sheffield Wednesday against Leeds tomorrow night on uh, Talksport 2. 10 to go in the EFL, and it is heating up at the top of the championship. Talksport the place to be for that uh, competition's culmination and we'll have all of it including the final day and the playoffs right at the end 
only live on TalkSport. Cresswell is on in Emerson's stead. That is a concern, I think. Yeah, it is. I think we all know the delivery as well that Aaron Cresswell has. Minimal minutes this year, maybe due to the fact that he's, you know, 34 years old. And But I like him, Cresswell. I think he's got a fantastic delivery. But Emerson, I think you're right, Sam, what you said. He's been brilliant this year for West Ham. Bowen tried to squeeze through a very tight gap, didn't get the free kick. Eventually, the referee, after waiting for the advantage to materialise, pulls it back, gives a free kick against Gunter. And it is going to be a West Ham free kick. Some yards out, dead centre. Agustin and Gunter coming in from either side. Well done, Jared Bowen. I mean, at times, he's completely isolated, receiving the ball on the run. And there's three players around him and he's drawing a foul and it's an absolutely he's done well i think because i said it he's isolated a lot on his own and when you've got players like bowen and kudus that are so comfortable running out players pakata they cause so many problems and it's interesting because this is a decent position for james warprouse to have a guy it might be just a little bit too far out but he is so good at getting this ball up and over i mean he makes it look easy not scored a direct free kick in the Premier League for West Ham United did score four direct free kicks in all competitions last season and uh, he's placed the ball down with purpose Pakatar is there as well 69 minutes gone it's Warprouse who steps up right footed aims it towards the far corner it was always going to be difficult for him to get the requisite power from there and it was well wide of the left hand upright it's interesting because he completely changed his technique there Sam, it was you know we, we know he's good at getting up and over, but he went with the like knuckleball, you know, almost like Cristiano Ronaldo used to do, and it was an interesting, you know, choice of technique because maybe I think he's been you know, practicing that after training, Leanne. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we know he's so good at set pieces and free kicks, but I think in that situation there, I think it's a waste in the end because if you're going to do that, you might as well play it, you know, do something intricate to create a situation in front of goal. Going to be a couple of substitutions for Freiburg in the next few minutes. Uh, Michael Gregorich is coming on and so is uh, Weishaupt as they look to just change things up Hurler coming off and the other change I think is going to be Grifo I think yeah, it's Grifo which is a bit of a surprise I wonder if he's struggling just a little bit or they're protecting him for their next game away at Bochum at the weekend. Yeah, Gregoric is a very good goal scorer, you know, so they'd have to look out for him. But it is a weird one they've taken off Grifo because... But they haven't really offered much, Sam, going forward, no, let's be haven't. honest. So, you know, I'd still keep Grifo on because we know how dangerous he can be from set pieces. West Ham got Burnley at the weekend at home. In fact, they benefit from the fact that although they've travelled tonight to Germany, they've got three big home games to play over the next uh, couple of weeks before the international break Burnley, Freiburg and then Aston Villa here is Bowen scooping down the left hand side chopping in on his left foot he's stopped by Weishaupt and it's cleared away upfield by the Germans towards the halfway line back it comes through so foul onto Bowen again right edge of the area trying to steer across into the centre blocked by Herfler and then it's released into Gregorich who leads the ball up towards the edge of the centre circle didn't really know what to do with it because he had no options in front of him had to wait, found Doan Doan then cuts in from the right side runs into a congested area of the field picked up by Zuma, referee says play on despite the fact that Doan went down and West Ham escape over halfway 19 to go, Pakatar looking to feed the ball into an area for Kudus to run onto but he just didn't quite get it right and it flew into the arms of goalkeeper Noah Atubolu. Now I love that recovery run from James Warprouse to kind of get across Doan in that situation. It was brilliant on the other side of the ball. And then you can see it's the first time we've seen West Ham try to turn this Freiburg team. You know, sometimes you have to mix it up a little bit. And I think equally both number nines that are playing the positions are isolated. Every time they get the ball, you know, there's not many options for them because they have to wait for their teammates to catch up to them. Doan getting across uh, Alvarez. And in it goes towards uh, Herfler. And Freiburg now trying to build down the left with Weishaupt. Infield. Midway inside the West Ham half. Lifted towards the back edge of the penalty area. And Gregory gets up there and heads it goalwards. And it's safely classed from the edge of the six-yard box. Good long deep cross by Herfler. And the header was firm but straight at would be Fabianski. Yeah, I think the ball from Herfler in the end didn't have much pace on it. So Gregovic had to kind of 
make the power come from it and by the by the time the ball got there there wasn't much power on the header at all because the ball wasn't quick enough but good positioning peeled off you know the defender on the back post and it's a good ball in but couldn't quite get you know enough power behind the header 17 to go on talk sport tonight a noisy tight arena the stadion and force finkel bowen has gone down five yards outside the d and he thinks he should have had a foul there and leanne i think agrees with him the balls run loose and Freiburg have got it back to the goalkeeper. Should it have been a foul on I him? think I thought it was a free kick. I mean, but in the first half, we saw Do Doan go down, didn't we, like quite easily. But I don't think that, I think we'll have to see this one again, but I can't believe that's not a foul. I mean, Bowen turns the player, runs through, to me, gets brought down. Deb David Moyes is not happy about it. He believes that there should have been a foul there as well. Referee wasn't forthcoming with the, the free kick. And it goes all the way back to... Uh, Matthias Ginter at the heart of the Freiburg defence flicked out wide towards Gunter it's a little bit too uh, heavy almost uh, went past Weishaupt as well and it's out for a throw in in the right format position for so foul Benfica 1 Rangers 2 latest scoreline after 65 minutes in Lisbon tonight Liverpool winners by 5 goals to 1 away in Prague Roma beat Brighton 4-0 in Rome in the early kickoff, and Aston Villa drew 0 0 in the Conference League, away from home in Amsterdam with the second legs all to come in a week's time. It's still goalless between Freiburg and West Ham, and Pakatar too casual. The ball was played up to him, and he was in space, and he could have taken a touch actually. Instead, he started to flick it round the corner, and from the centre of the Freiburg half, Jared Bowen wasn't really on the same wavelength and it was cut out by Freiburg it was an interesting one because as a player you know Ginter and Gilder have done a really good job getting tight to Pakatana it was the one time that he just needed to take a little look because they were nowhere around him so he needs to mix it up a little bit I understand where he was doing because it happens to the best of us where you know the players have been all over him every time he gets the ball because they know how integral he is with the ball but if he just had a little look he could have turned in that space but that pocket of space that he's finding himself in there that's where he's the most dangerous that's where he can be really effective when he's turning and running at players yeah he's uh, playing in a more central role in this second half as well with Bowen going out towards the right hand side uh, and it has just meant that uh, Kudus has been given almost a bit more license to, to roam. He also is on the right too. It's very heavily weighted down that side. They look a little bit unbalanced down the left. Not as much coming down that area of the field. War Prowse has sort of moved into that area of the field. Good touch by Pakatar into War Prowse. Left edge of the area. He strikes it. But it came across his body on his left foot and he wasn't comfortable and he couldn't get enough venom behind it. And it was easily saved down low by Atubolu. Yeah, to be fair, like by the time Suchek played it to him, it was bobbling along the floor. We know it's on his weaker foot, so it just didn't have much pace on it. But I think it's interesting, Sam, because you said it in the first half, that Bowen would go out wide in the second half and Pakata would be central, and they clearly look better. The, the players look more comfortable in those areas. A chance to, to break forward for Salai, and he couldn't quite control it after Gregory had just nudged it into his body. Just a bit behind him, he tried to carry it forward, and it uh, eventually ran through to the goalkeeper Freiburg fans enjoying themselves behind the goal jumping up and down trying to keep things moving here is uh, Mavropanos for West Ham United it's been a goal in the game at the Stadium of Light Talk Sports David Tanner is watching 67 minutes gone it's Benfica 2 Rangers 2 now and the Portuguese are back in this game thanks to an own goal it was a free kick from wide right floated into the box and Conor Goldson with not a red jersey near him heads the ball into the top corner well out of the reach of his own goalkeeper Jack Butland who's had a terrific performance Gareth Southgate will be interested to hear tonight but uh, against the run of play it would have to be said Benfica have equalised it's Benfica 2, Rangers 2 Sam uh, back here it's Freiburg nil, West Ham United nil. that's disappointing and uh, disappointing for Conor Goldston as well and Rangers 2-2 the score there 68 minutes I think played in that game we're a little bit further ahead here Freiburg nil, West Ham nil. and we're heading up to our 77th minute and uh, West Ham United with Burnley to play on Sunday keep you in touch with that in the Sunday session here is Cresswell bursting forward 
uh, tries to get to the edge of the area. Produces a lovely cross into the box. It's just a whisker away from Jared Bowen, who came in on the edge of the six-yard box and was just a couple of hair follicles from converting what was a delicious left-footed delivery by the substitute Aaron Cresswell. Absolutely brilliant ball from Aaron Cresswell. We know he has that in his locker. I touched upon it when he came on about the types of deliveries that he has and he can do. And it was just inches away from Jared Bowen, but fantastic ball into the box. And that's what I was trying to make a point of, Sam, that these players are more comfortable in those areas. Pakata looks more comfortable higher up. I still don't think he should be in that number nine role, but they have to make do with what they have right now and the players that are available and that they have. Jared Bowen looks more comfortable out wide as well so why don't they start in that way like they clearly you know there's a tactic they use but Kudus is now getting involved in the game more the distances are closer between Jeroboam and Kudus so why did they not start like that we're going to send Leanne down to do the interview with David Moyes a little bit later on I'm sure he'll love me <laughs> Doan doesn't reach it I don't like. I don't mind David Moyes. You know, I think sometimes the players have to. Yes, managers have tactics, but it's not down to David Moyes to play through the lines when the players have the ball at their feet. You know, some of them are making such poor decisions when they're getting it. He's not on the pitch telling them don't turn the back line when Sufa had that opportunity to play James Warprouse in. He wasn't telling them, you know, go backwards. That's when the players have to also take responsibility upon themselves. Eleven minutes to go. Going to be a couple more substitutions for Freiburg in the next few moments. Looks like Kubla is coming on. Lucas Kubla, who missed the last game with a thigh injury. He's about to enter the fray down in front of us. Suma wants a free kick. The referee says, we've well, got the ball. What do you want a free kick for? Play on. West Ham encouraged to get it forward. We're going into the final 10 minutes here, live on Talk Sport tonight. And chances have been few and far between, but more of them have come for West Ham in the second half. And certainly they've looked the more likely in that second half to get in front in the game. 11 attempts, four of them on target, West Ham. 11 attempts, two on target for Freiburg over the course of the 79 minutes and 30 seconds we've had so far. Kudus out towards the far touchline. The Stadion am in Freiburg full to brimming and with a hell of a lot of noise. 2,000 West Ham fans have made the journey. And they would love a last-minute goal in this game, a late goal in this game. Remember, they scored late goals in their game against Everton. Two goals in stoppage time in last Saturday's encounter, which certainly gave it a little bit of a sugar coating. But they've given the ball away cheaply here, and Gregory has sent it out wide. And it's Weishaupt out towards the left wing for Freiburg. He stops the ball, plays it on, Gunter joining tees it back up for Salai inside the area and he sends it into Gregory and he taps it home from inside the six yard box there is a forlorn look by Fabianski across the line to see if the offside flag goes up but Gregory is celebrating he believes he's given Freiburg the lead with 10 minutes remaining in the Stadion Amphorswinkel and after hardly having an effort on goal in the second half they have stolen the lead. A mistake by Edson Alvarez, giving it away on halfway. Gregory picked it up from Eggestein. It was sent wide towards the left. And when the ball came back into the box, eventually from Gunter, Salai drove it through the area. And Gregory timed his run to perfection to tap it home and steer Freiburg into the lead in the tie. It's Freiburg 1, West Ham 0. Yeah, this is this all comes from Alvarez. It's a really poor giveaway. You cannot lose the ball in that area when you're on the build-up. And instantly, I thought this has to be offside. When you look at the replay, definitely not offside. Mavra Panos is, you know, two or three yards behind Kurt Zuma, and that's who's playing, you know, Gregovic on. So we mentioned, you know, he was always going to cause a problem. It's a tap-in in the end, and it looks like now, you know, David Moyes is ringing in the changes, but it's a poor giveaway really poor giveaway from Alvarez and you cannot give away that ball in those areas at all a couple of challenges including uh, Calvin Phillips on for War Prowse and uh, Muslia is on for Sil Dilia and Kubla and Doan and this is the other change well Kubla for Doan is the other change for Freiburg so West Ham now behind in the tie by a goal to nil in Freiburg and that was sloppy from Edson Alvarez I think he's been brilliant all season Edson Alvarez but that mistake on halfway you give a team a chance like that and you invite pressure and if you're not quite switched on 
it causes you an issue. And Gregor Rich, who's got more goals than any other player in the Europa League for Freiburg, has scored once again his eighth European goal in his career. Yeah, and we know how good he is at scoring goals, but I think Alvarez, you know, he's been good this season, but I think he's been quite poor. And I think this is where the West Ham fans, you know, get frustrated because they go behind. I think James Ward-Prowse has looked pretty effective when he's on the ball, but do you take James Ward-Prowse off and put Calvin Phillips on? Surely you take off Alvarez or Suacek. And that's probably the frustration where it comes from. I know it's easy to say when you're sitting and watching these games, management is completely different, Sam. We know that. But I think, you know, when it comes down to it, West Ham would have more of a chance of winning this game or bringing themselves back into it with James Warprouse on and Calvin Phillips. Surely you sacrifice, you know, it looks like Suchek's higher up the field of play now, almost playing in the two with Pakata. So you've got Kudus on the left-hand side, Bowen on the right, Suchek and Pakatar as the sort of central figures and Alvarez and Calvin Phillips the two in front of the defence as Freiburg come forward again down the left towards the edge of the area Gunter picks out Eggstein and Eggstein well he wraps his left foot around it but couldn't keep it down it goes over the bar and out for a goal kick and West Ham are going to be a little bit careful here because 1-0 rescuable 2-0 big problem yeah, and you know, Eggestein there just hits it completely over the bar, but you can see they're getting into good areas. And again, you know, the tactics from tonight's game from David Moyes, you know, I was kind of sticking up for David Moyes before the game, and I was saying, look at where they're, they are, let's have a little bit of realism about it. But what I'm seeing within this game, it was winnable, still is winnable for West Ham. But you don't take off. You bring on Calvin Phillips. I know he's not had the best start to his West Ham career, but I like Calvin Phillips. I still think there's a good player within him. He just needs to get some games, gets, needs to get some minutes. But you don't take off Ward Prowse in these types of games. And I think that's where the frustration comes from with the fans. Well, you certainly don't take off Ward Prowse and replace him with Phillips in the seconds after you've conceded the first goal. Exactly. No, not at all. You don't do that. And I think you have more chance of winning the game with both those players on the field of play. It's a very negative, you know, tactical thing to do to keep two defensive midfielders and now a third one. Yeah, Calvin Phillips can play the pivot role. But having three players in that position... When you're trying to win the game, you know, it's not a foregone conclusion that Freiburg come to the London Stadium and end up, you know, West Ham beat them. It's not a foregone conclusion at all. Five minutes to go, normal time. Freiburg 1, West Ham 0. And Calvin Phillips to take a free kick for West Ham. He sends it high into the opposition box. So check with a header. Zuma tries to fly a volley goalwards. He miskicks it. It's cleared away by Gunter and into the midpoint of the Freiburg half. Back on halfway, it's with Aaron Cresswell for West Ham. They trail by a goal to nil. And what is becoming a difficult night in the Black Forest to navigate their way through. They send the ball up towards Pakitar, who helps it on. It's behind Bowen. It was a bit too easy for Pakitar to get hold of that ball. And you would have thought maybe he might have been better served taking an extra touch, bringing it down and using it as a platform from which to build. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I think he's had a decent game tonight, Pakata. He's getting into good positions. But I think we've seen a couple of times flicking it around the corner. I love players that have flair and creativity. You never want to take that away from him. But he has to just bring that down on the chest there himself. Create an opportunity. You can't be just nonchalantly chesting it, you know, to the opposition in the 18-yard box. Right. Bit of a whack for Kurt Zuma to deal with. He's just stretching out his uh, left leg. Phillips gets things moving again for West Ham. 1-0 to Freiburg. 86 minutes on the clock live on TalkSport. The second leg comes next Thursday from 5.45. And Freiburg about to take a lead with them to London. Six games without a win in the league, but they've come and outwitted West Ham. And we shouldn't be surprised that they had a spell going forward. They've had more shots than anybody else in the competition before this match day. 137 before today, another 13 tonight, so 150 shots, and they scored more goals than any other team in the Europa League this season before tonight. Gregor Rich has got their latest. They might not be top scorers now that uh, Liverpool scored five this evening, but they've certainly always carried an attacking threat, and we shouldn't be surprised that at some point in the second half, when they didn't look like they were going to, they've tested the West Ham defence and broken it. And we've said that before about how many goals you know West Ham have leaked this season. And I think it's really poor organisationally on that goal. You know, the, the back line are all over the place. And you're looking at it from a football perspective when you're seeing it. You think that has to be offside. There's no way. And then Mavropanos and Kurt Zuma, they're completely behind. 
you know, they're not in the line. Sufal's not in the line with him either. And it's like, you know, all players go to put their hand up as soon as they think it's going to be offside. It definitely isn't. And it's a poor goal to give away. Really unorganised in those areas. And I think, you know, overall, I don't think Freiburg have been better than West Ham. I just think they've obviously taken it. I think it's been a poor game overall, Sam. I think the quality-wise hasn't been very good when it comes to final third play. I think both teams would be happy with the draw. We saw, we said that from the minute one. You can see both teams are quite pragmatic. You know, no one's really willing to kind of break the lines or anything like that. So I think it's been not the best game at all. Freiburg about to win their first game since the 20th of January. Christian Strike, their manager, said he was determined his side would give it a real go against West Ham. They certainly have done that. Two minutes for West Ham to find an equaliser. That would change the nature of the tie. Kudus out wide towards Cresswell. Cresswell on halfway. Travels back into his own half and then tries to get forward. He sends it to Zuma. Phillips is on the near touchline. And we've only got two minutes left. Christian Strike, the Freiburg Brost, is a fan favourite, understated but full of charm. His 12-year spell in charge is a record-breaking one. He's known for rousing speeches. Lost only six of his 22 Europa League matches before tonight. Very well thought of in this part of Germany and beyond. It'll be even greater thought of after this if they get the victory tonight. Ball goes back into the Freiburg half. And it's with Herfler back to Gulda. Then on down the left looking for Gunter who's got forward. It's amazing that Gunter has played two 90-minute games now, bearing in mind that he was out pretty much for most of the season with a series of injuries, including two broken arms and a serious infection. Well, yeah, the fact that he's come through two back to about 90 minutes, especially of this magnitude within this game, you know, mentally, psychologically and physically, fair play to him. But like I said, I don't think West Ham have necessarily deserved to lose this game. And I still think, you know, they can get something out of it. They've got individual players that can do something. Pakitar gave the ball away far too cheaply. Phillips has won it back there, tigerishly. Then sent it back to his goalkeeper, Fabianski, who's launched it high into the German sky. It drops down on the head of Gunter, uh, Ginter. Ginter out to the far side to Gunter. Ginter to Gunter, and then it's with Sofau on the halfway line. And West Ham have it with Phillips. I think we've seen three opportunities there the last three times Pakatos has touched the ball. And I like him as a player, the creativity, but I think he has to do better when he's possessing the ball. I think when West Ham's backs are against the wall and they need to find something, I don't know if he has that in him. I think, you know, when things are going well, great, but you need those players within this team that have that bite about them. There's no doubt in Pakatos' quality, but who really has that leadership mentality within this West Ham squad that's like, actually, we're not going to have this. You know, we shouldn't be losing games like this. And I, and I question that. Four minutes added at the end of the 90. And uh, they're about to make one more change and bring on Mikel Antonio for the final few minutes of the game. It does seem like an act that is probably a little bit too long in the coming. So far down the right side. Into Phillips now. Helps See, it on. That's the type of substitution sound that needs to happen as soon as they concede it. Not the Calvin Phillips for James Warprowse. Bring Calvin Phillips on, keep him on. But you bring on Mikel Antonio, you're losing the game and you need a goal. Pakistan coming off. And Antonio coming on for the final few seconds of the game, two minutes or so. Antonio, it's been a long time since he last scored a goal. Not managed to register a goal in his last 14 appearances for West Ham. Last goal was against Brighton on August the 26th. I know he's had injuries, but that's a long time without one. That is a long time, but the one thing I like about Mikel Antonio is that He's hungry. Cool. Has sent the ball down the left-hand side. And they're on the scamper once again. Muslia trying to get into an advanced position. And across comes Mavropanos and sends it out of play and away for a throw. And the Freiburg supporters believe they're going to win the game, Leanne. They believe they're going to get the job done. Yeah, it seems that way as well, which is quite surprising. I don't think they've necessarily been the better team at all. But again, you know, bringing Mikel Antonio on with two minutes to go. Like I said, he's a type of player that's tireless. You know, he does a lot of selfless running that I think West Ham needs. You know, you need players like that in your team that's going to tire down the defence because I think they've wasted a lot of energy, West Ham, within this game with players having to do too much off the ball running. When they get the ball, there's no options for them to go forward. Socek 
sends it high in towards the back post. It's headed behind, and that was uh, a rather unnecessary concession of a set piece by Kubla, and he puts it out and away for a corner in the 93rd minute of the game. Well, if West Ham get something from this, they'll be absolutely delighted. Bowen inside the box, waiting for a Cresswell delivery. A left-footed arcing one away from the goalkeeper, incoming from Aaron Cresswell. They're queued up inside the box here. Every West Ham player is in there apart from Cresswell. It's a deep one to the far post. Alvarez heads it back across the face of goal. Kubler away. Back out as far as so far. Into the area it goes. It's still not clear. Kudas brings it down. Needs a bit of poise here. A good delivery required. We've got 90 seconds left. It's to the back post. Headed down by Mavropanos. It was well wide of the goal and it goes out for a goal kick and maybe that is going to be that. Yeah, I mean, Kudos duck, digs that ball out really well. We've seen him do that two or three times tonight to the far post, but by the time the ball gets to Mavropanos, there's, again, not enough power on it to generate it to go to, to go on goal. So, you know, the chances are there, Sam. I think West Ham, both teams have been quite, you know, I'd say quite pedestrian when they've had the ball. I think, you quite, I think West Ham have looked a bit better when they're trying to get after it, but again... You know, you'd expect West Ham to be winning games like tonight. And it's not a foregone conclusion, you know, the second leg, that they're going to win that game comfortably. It's not a great clearance by Eggestein. And then Antonio has spotted the run of Bowen down the right-hand side. And he's played a beautiful ball to him. 30 seconds to go. Bowen into the penalty area. Gets it onto his left foot. Drives it goalwards. It ricochets kindly inside the box. Phillips can't get there. Bowen feels he's been floored on the edge of the area. The referee says play on. It's a throw into West Ham. Down by the corner flag. Is there going to be one last chance here? Freiburg 1, West Ham United 0. Into the final few seconds. Long throw incoming from Vlad Sufal. Can they complete a rescue act, West Ham United? Sufal runs up to the perimeter of the playing surface and sends it launching towards the near post. Picked on by Alvarez. Comes back to Phillips, who cracks it into a crowd. And it repels out towards the far side. Back in again it goes. A hand goes up inside the penalty area. A flick onto the back post. It's still not clear. Mavropanos over the bar. And they're checking VAR here for a possible West Ham penalty. I'll tell you what, Calvin Phillips caught the first one really, really well. And it looked like it ricocheted and West Ham were coming at it probably for the first time in this game. We've seen them, you know, going at it and it looks like they're checking it they are. on the VAR. There is a potential penalty check here. The hand was definitely up and above his shoulder and it struck him and it I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a penalty for West Ham. I'm almost certain that that strikes the hand of Viet Hopt as the ball is cleared into the air, inside the area. I think this is a penalty. Yeah, I think judging by the rules that we're told and what they're meant to be, that should be a penalty. Yes, it would be harsh, but the ball... The, the hand is outside of the silhouette, high up in the air. It would be harsh. It is going away from the goal, but I have a feeling it might be given as well. I think the referee will be called over to the monitor here because I don't think that... I think he makes his body unnaturally bigger, and we've seen penalties given for less than that in European football this season. Go back to the game in the Parc de France where Newcastle were denied a victory because of a, a penalty in the last minute of that game. I think... This is more obvious, and uh, there's no doubt that it hits the arm. The ball comes into the area, Socek wafts his foot at it, he places the ball, he kicks the ball into the air, and Weishaupt has his arm up above his shoulder. It strikes the arm of the Freiburg player, and on the evidence we've seen, I think it has to be a penalty. They are waiting. There is incredible amounts of time being spent here looking at this by the Spanish officials in the VAR room. It's a massive call, this. You can see in, from Vice Hall, he's kind of... He knows it hit his arm. He knows it's hit his hand. You can tell in a player's face. And I feel for him because it, it's a hard one, Sam, because, yes, it was in an unnatural position. But it has, he's not done, it's not like a purpose, he's not done it on purpose. Well, That's what my are they opinion. checking for here? Because this is so clear. It either is or it isn't, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you, you don't need to look at it 40 times. No, you, you don't. either make the decision that that is a penalty or not. Yeah, it's a, it's a hard one because I've no idea what they're looking at, why it's taking so long. The only the accusation could over to be the that Socek might, might have committed a foul as he attempted to get on the ball and pushed Weishaupt in the back. Maybe he's considering that as a possible option. But there's no doubt that it struck the hand. Yeah, it did. And again, this is taking far too long. I mean, I've no idea why they've not called the referee over to the monitor. 
it makes no sense you know now it's been almost three minutes yeah, it's more been three or less minutes, yeah. that they've been checking this for he's taking too long I thought uh, the referee is going over to his monitor so now he's going to review the footage and if he does I'm pretty certain he's going to point to the penalty spot and offer West Ham United the chance to equalise in the 98th possibly even the 99th minute so he's I mean, watching the replay of the ball coming into the box, the two players tangling, spiralling into the air, and Weishaupt striking his wrist. His arm is in a nat natural position. I think it's the most obvious one I've seen in a long time. Yeah, I still think it's quite harsh, but I, the thing that bothers but me... But under the rules. The rules are the rules, yeah. And that is a penalty. We've seen, you're right, you know, one's given Newcastle. But I don't understand why it's taken three minutes, Sam, to send him over to the monitor. They'll, they'll be looking why, at why proximity. They so long? They'll be looking at proximity. But I think proximity actually is eradicated when you have your arms that high in the air and that far away from your body. So I think it's very difficult. You know, I'm, I'm just using the, the, the raft of penalty decisions that I've seen given when these incidents have occurred to inform my judgment that I believe that that as a result should be a penalty if you ask me if I think realistically it should be a penalty my answer would be no it's far too harsh but under the current laws of the game I think he has to give it exactly we sit on these calls at the beginning of the season we get taught the rules here's the verdict the referee does the television signal and he doesn't give a penalty he overrules the VAR and decides no penalty and I've got to be honest, I cannot believe it. Wow, I'm lost for words because I said to you, didn't I, Sam?